It's gigantic sale time again at IGA, so you can afford to shop big. Save a gigantic half price on Peter's ice cream, plus you could win a year's worth of groceries. That's the way I like it. Maratis. Oh, it's an absolute stunner. Sydney Olympic have the lead. Miyazawa. Oh, what a goal. An absolute stunning strike from Miyazawa. Well, mate, once you get to a grand final, you shouldn't need too much sort of uh, revving up. Yeah, we've got some in incredibly good kids that, you know, have got a lot of imagination. Into the area. Still going, Hatsi Maratis. Oh, what a strike. They've got great engines, they work very hard for each other, they're very disciplined at what they do. He sends it in, here's a big chance, it's the opening goal! It's Go Shirai! Kieran Backus didn't train all week, he's, he's very sick. Travis Mage is very tight in the groins, a couple of the boys got a few little nigglies. I think now, in the second half of the season, we've got the confidence to play and we trust what we do and how we play. We've just got to manage our, our, our week off and, and make sure that we keep the boys uh, you know, mentally focused and pairing well. There it is! Seven! And he'll have to do it himself, and he does exactly that! In a little bit, you've got to let these guys off the leash. Once they start going, you know, they're a joy to watch. After 25 rounds of high quality football, only two teams are left standing. Blacktown City and Sydney Olympic finished third and fourth on the regular season ladder. Now they're battling it out for the state's biggest prize. I'm Simon Hill and this is the IGA NPL New South Wales Men's One Grand Final 2014. season in the National Premier Leagues. All in all, seven state titles are being decided right around the country this weekend. This afternoon, New South Wales will crown its champion and perhaps surprisingly, neither of the top two in the regular season, Bonnie Rick White Eagles and Blacktown Spartans, have made the showpiece occasion here this afternoon. Instead, it's Blacktown City and Sydney Olympic. And Adam Santarossa is my co-commentator for the day. Afternoon, Adam. Are these two Worthy of contesting the big one? Yeah, afternoon, Simon. Definitely. Uh, these two sides, it, it sounds silly given they're in the grand final, but both are in some pretty good form. Uh, Blacktown have won their last three games. They've scored 11 goals in those games without conceding, so they're in some pretty good form in both areas of the pitch. And you look at Sydney Olympic, they've won five out of their last six, and the only defeat they did face was against Bonnie Rig in, in somewhat of a meaningless game for Olympic. They couldn't really improve their position on the ladder, uh, and obviously Bonnie Rig scored in the 93rd minute. So... Both come into pretty good form, plenty of goals, and it should be a cracking game today. And we're expecting a decent uh, walk-up crowd as well. There are a few Sydney Olympic supporters already in here, and those uh, will be cheering Blacktown as well in their black and red. Well, these two have uh, three titles already, of course, between them since the reorganisation of the state competitions back in 2001. Blacktown winning in 2007 and 2010, and Olympic a year later. The Demons can go out on their own at the top if they can record a third championship ahead of Bankstown and Bonnie Rick. Olympic, of course, are the story club, though, having won two national titles in the days of the old National Soccer League. Well, let's uh, take a look at the two team lineups. These uh, are not confirmed just at the moment. Here's how uh, Blacktown line up. We expect that they're going to be unchanged from the side that defeated Bonnie Rick to claim their spot in the grand final. They include quite a bit of... Uh, a-League experience as well. Nenad Vekic is uh, between the posts. He's uh, played overseas in Hong Kong. You'll see that there's uh, quite a bit of experience up top as well. Mitch Marley, the former Sydney FC striker, and Ryuji Miyazawa, the uh, creative Japanese player who we think will play in the number 10 role. He's actually uh, featuring in his final game in Australia before he heads back to Japan for a trial with uh, J2. But uh, one of the ones to watch out for, Adam, is the number seven, Travis Major, who scored a whole bag full of goals this season and has just been crowned 
the uh, National Premier League's New South Wales Player of the Year on Friday. Yeah, not not traditionally a striker either, Travis Major. He was a, a convert at the start of the year. It was something Mark Crittenden decided to do, and he didn't quite have an option as a number nine, and he thought uh, Travis Major can find the back of the net. And uh, Travis has said it has been a learning curve, but it's one he's taken to very well, and, and it was crowned on Friday Player of the Year. And I'll tell you what, there's a couple of players in this Blacktown side that could have held that trophy aloft as well. They've got some, some assets there. Kieran Backus being one of those, he lost out to Travis Major by just a single point in the voting. Uh, those trophies, of course, announced on Friday night at Rose Hill Racecourse in uh, Sydney's West. Well, let's hear from uh, one of the two Blacktown City co-captains. Zach Pancross is one. That man, Travis Major, is the other. He was speaking with Adam a little bit earlier on. So, Travis, big few days for you. Player of the Year on Friday night and now a grand final. Yeah, it's obviously nice to get personal honours like that. But as I said the other night, I thought there could have been five other players from our team that could easily got the award. So, just happy that Blacktown brought it home in the end. What's been the secret the last few weeks, really turning it on? Plenty of goals. What's, uh, what's been the change? I think we were just frustrated in the three games we didn't score goals and then it was just a culmination of things. And then against Spartans, we exploded and put seven away and... From then on, we, we sort of had our mojo back and we found it easy to find the back of the net and we hope to continue that today. How do you see Olympic today? They're into pretty good form. Uh, I think they've won their last five games, so it goes to show they're, they're, you know, they're, they're certainly on fire. Yeah, definitely. They're probably the informed team at the moment. I mean, we've burst them three times this year and there's only been a goal in it each time. So it'll be a close game, but we both like to play free-flowing football, so it should be a good spectacle for everyone here today. And who are the key players you need to stop for Olympic, you think? Um, probably one of our ex-players, Harris. You can never know what he can do. He can pull a goal out of nowhere. And um, obviously the two, two little Japanese boys are pretty nippy and they get around the park, so we've got to keep them quiet. All right, all the best. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. That's Major speaking with uh, Adam Santarossa. Uh, Adam, just tell us the strengths of uh, Travis Major and how well he's adapted to that uh, positional switch. I mean, it's quite a change, isn't it? Right fullback to one of the main strikers. Yeah, and that's something, uh, is his real asset, his versatility. I mean, the last few years he's gone through the lines, obviously starting as a defender, but moving into midfield. And he always played as that attacking midfielder, sometimes as a number 10 that could chip in for goals, but can create as well. And I think, you know, he does play at the number nine, but the way Blacktown's set up, they've got that interplay. Mitchell Marley can play on the last man. Of course, he's got tremendous pace, so he can unlock a defence. And then Ruzi Miyazawa as well, he can cut inside from the right as well. And they all can play in wide roles. They can come more centrally. So they will, you look for them today, they will change and they can all find the back of the net. So they've got that versatility, and it's a real strength. And it's part of the reason we've seen them score 11 goals in their last three games, because they're so dangerous from so many areas. And uh, So look for that this afternoon. The player we haven't spoken about is, is Kieran Backus, who, of course, had a stint in Europe, in France, with uh, Le Mans. I think he was offered a contract uh, as well by Siena in Italy. He had a stint with Perth Glory in the A-League. He was once in the Socceroos squad under Holger Rossick, or mm. the train-on squad, didn't play. He's had his problems with injuries, but he has been such a key figure for the Demons this season. Yeah, he was Blacktown's best against Bonnerig in the preliminary final, and, and I have to say, uh, it, it's no surprise that he's in the mix previously with A-League a clubs and, and the clubs you mentioned as well, because he is a real talent. Again, he's someone that can do both jobs. He can go forward, but he can also play a role uh, as a holder in midfield. So, again, he's got that versatility, and, and this is the shop front for these players. You know, A-League clubs, there's always opportunities with injury replacements and the like, so... A big performance today, and, and who knows what can happen. And he's certainly one that I, I know scouts will be watching. All right, well, uh, Blacktown's road to the grand final looked tough in the final series. They had to defeat the teams that finished one and two on the ladder to qualify. But that's exactly what they did after a very strong campaign in the regular season. 2010 was the last time Blacktown City tasted success. That year, the club secured the Premier League title and will be looking to go one better this season. The early signs were nothing if not impressive, and a stunning opening to the season saw Mark Crittenden's side thrash South Coast Wolves 5-0. Captain Fantastic Travis Major grabbing a double in what will turn out to be a lucrative season in front of goal for the skipper. Japanese star Ruyi Miyazawa was also on the score sheet, and he was another player that would go on to enjoy a standout 2014. City backed up that opening day with another clean sheet, this time over St George in a 2-0 victory. Daniel Araujo and Sasa Makura are on the score sheet as they maintain their 100% record. A further six goals arrived in the next two games, including a six-goal thriller against the Arpia Leichhardt Tigers. Ruji Miyazawa's double and a further strike from Kieran Bacchus enabled City to remain undefeated over the first four rounds of the season. By the time May came around, City had tasted defeat on two separate occasions, but had managed to pull the results back around. 
Two goals in each half were more than enough to see off the Rockdale City Suns, who themselves would go on to have an impressive regular season campaign. Bacchus and Miyazawa again on the score sheet. A run of three wins and seven goals saw City well placed by the midway point of the season. Efforts in each half from Malia and Miyazawa would prove just the tonic in a 2-0 home win over St George. Three more wins in the following four games saw Blacktown City sitting pretty by mid-June. Sutherland Sharks were left looking toothless in a tense 1-0 victory. The following week saw City gain revenge for defeat to today's finalists earlier in the season. Miyazawa and Major were again on the target before the halftime interval in a mightily impressive 2-0 victory. But by round 20, the wheels were in danger of falling off. Well, Tuxford's dropped it! It's in the back of the net! Boderig have a goal! Back-to-back -back defeats for Mark Crittenden's men included a 1-0 loss to the eventual premiers, the Bonnerig White Eagles. However, City ensured perfect preparation for the final series as they thrashed local rivals the Blackdown Spartans 7-0 and what was a ruthless performance is Miyazawa. Oh, what a goal! An absolute stunning strike from Miyazawa. I didn't expect seven, but we are quite confident coming today that we could do a job. Mitchell Malia claimed a hat-trick as City laid down the gauntlet to their grand final rivals. Trailing by three at the break, the Spartans conceded a further four goals after half-time in what was City's best display of the season. There it is, seven. And this was meant to be their dream day. The day the club would win their first ever premiership. But it's been an absolute nightmare. The result was even more remarkable coming off the back of a barren run in front of goal. City eventually ending the campaign in third place on the ladder. And well set for a tilt at the season's biggest prize. There was a local derby in the opening game of the final series. City coming out on top with a devastating 3-0 win. Goals from the skipper along with Mitchell Malia and Matthew Lewis saw them safely through to the next round and a showdown with Bonnie Reed. Still going Miyazawa. Cross comes in. Fell to Malia. It's a penalty. Big decision in this one. It's a huge call. But the semi-final would prove a much sterner test for Mark Crittenden's side. They were eventually thankful to a late Kieran Backer's penalty in added time which helped secure a place in today's grand final. So Mark had the week off courtesy of the win over Bonnie Rig. Is that a help or a hindrance? Um, hopefully a help. We had a couple of boys that were a little bit tight and a bit sore. Um, so hopefully the week off uh, will have us nice and fresh and we'll probably come out of the blocks running, I would think, um, and hopefully run for the full 90. Plenty of goals the last three games. What's been the secret to that? Oh, look, we play good football. Um, we do like to go full. We are a very attacking side. So I think you know if you can get yourself into that final third and get some shots on goal, hopefully they're going to they're gonna find the net. Travis Major, Player of the Year on Friday night. You, you were central to the move to, to, to move him further forward. Uh, you must be happy with that. Yeah, look, it was at the start of the year. We didn't have a genuine number nine, um, but he's, he's always been a good finisher. So we thought with his frame, he's, got to be, he's a big lad, um, very quick, and a good finisher. So we'll give him a try, and uh, it's worked out really well, really well. How do you see Olympic today? Obviously, they've played one game more than you, so they may be a bit tired in the legs. How do you see the game going? It'll be a good game of football. Uh, Grant has them playing some really good football as well. So I think the two sides will open up, and I think it'll be very entertaining. And who are the keys for them, do you think? Oh, the two Japanese boys do very well. Uh, Harris Gotatsis, ex-Blacktown boy, does very well. Um, Hats Miratis at the top. So. But look, as I said to our blokes, mate, to be in a grand final, you know, you've know, got to have a good squad, and we, we, we think they're all, all very handy players. And uh, it's been a, a mixed few years for Blacktown, but it's good to see that they're really turning it on. Waratah Cup as well. It's been, it's been a pretty trem tremendous year, regardless of how the result goes today. Yeah, it's been a fantastic year. I mean, we went very young. Um, no, we haven't got a boy over it's gigantic sale time again at IGA, so you can afford to shop big. Save a gigantic half price on Peter's ice cream, plus you could win a year's worth of groceries. That's the way I like it. Five year old, so to have such a young squad, a little bit of an experience, but they've gelled together really well as a group, and uh, you know, we're extremely happy with everything that's, that's happened so far, and hopefully things go well today. You mentioned the inexperience. That, that's something that sometimes can be a negative on grand final day. How have how they, how they coped during the week? They've been excellent. They're, they're probably like young boys. They're buzzing around and uh, they're very excited about today. So I think they'll be okay. And what's your message for your players today? Very proud of them. And as you said, no matter what happens today, mate, I'll always be proud of them. All the best. Thank you. Adam in uh, conversation there with the Blacktown City coach Mark Crittenden in his uh, fourth season as head coach after taking over from Atek Gench. And of course he is the newly crowned 
Coach of the Year as voted by his peers on Friday. Not too long to go before kickoff here at uh, the Sydney United Sports Centre, the 2014 Grand Final. We've spoken about Blacktown City. Let's move on to talk about the opposition, Sydney Olympic, one of the grand old names of Australian football, founded back in 1957 as Panhellenic, a winner of two national titles, two national cups, and one state title three years ago. Olympic, of course, have produced many top names for the national team. Brett Emerton is one. Tim Cale started as a junior at the club. And here are the names that will represent them this afternoon. They've had to make a couple of changes, Adam, from the team that defeated Bonnie Rick in the preliminary final. Yanis Barakis makes way for Ryan Keir, who was suspended uh, for that preliminary final. And Michael Gaitatsis replaces the suspended Will Angel. But So uh, they've got several key players that are being highlighted here. Dimitri Hatsimuratis up top. And the Japanese duo of Go Shirai and Taiga uh, Sueda. Yeah, look, uh, the interesting one is, is Michael Gay Tatsis. He generally plays more of a central role. He'll certainly do the job there on the left, but he doesn't quite just have the, that wide role that you saw William Angel play last weekend. I mean, he was by far Olympics best in the, in the short time he was on the pitch. He actually was you know, buzzing around and he actually set up the first goal for, for Shirai. So he, he'll be a loss and it'll be interesting to see how Gay Tatsis slots in because I, I think he's better more central, but he has to play that role today and I think he'll do it, but it, there is a question mark over it. There is uh, Taiga Sueda, who, uh, along with Goshirai, will go and train with Sydney FC once this busy little period is out of the way for the Olympic. Of course, they play the grand final today, and then in 48 hours' time, they'll play in the FFA Cup against the uh, Victorian outfit Bentley Greens. Watch out, too, for Braden Sorge, the right fullback. He is uh, a real young gun with lots of pace, lots of energy at him. Yeah, and he's in the uh, team of the year for the NPL New South Wales, which shows uh, his quality. And, and watch for him overlapping there on the flank. Brilliant getting crosses in and, and just buzzes about. And, and he's certainly one to watch. He, he does the wing-back role to perfection. And on the other flank is uh, Troy Danaskos, who's uh, nominally a midfielder by trade, but is being forced to play at left fullback. Can't get a spot in the centre of the park, such as the competition. And there's Paul Henderson, the grand old man of the team at uh, 38 years of age. He's the only survivor from the Olympic team that won the championship three years ago. So a very strong-looking Sydney Olympic lineup, And uh, their captain, of course, as you saw there, is Peter Markovic. It's a homecoming of sorts for their skipper. He, of course, spent many years playing for Sydney United. So, Peter, proud day for the club? Yeah, it's a huge, huge day for the club. Uh, we've been three years without a grand final uh, trophy. So um, it's, it's good, good to be part of. A good form in recent weeks, uh, won five of the last six. What's what's been the, the turnaround at the, last, the latter stages of the year? I think the momentum. Um, you know, the boys have gelled really well together. The training's been fantastic, no injuries, and um, yeah, it's it's just been a joy. You've played one more game than Blacktown. Uh, training during the week. What, what's the toll taken on the players? Uh, none whatsoever. We've tampered down what we need to do, um, but other than that, training's been the same. Intensity's lifted, and the boys are excited to be part of it. And what's the mindset going in today? Obviously, a, a couple of changes there as well. Um, not so much. We, mindset's just to play our game, um, not to worry too much about the opponents, and um, hopefully we get the win. Blacktown scored 11 goals in their last three games. Uh, going to be careful at the back. How do you see them going today? Uh, it's going to be a very tough encounter. They've, they've been one of the teams to, to beat this year, um, but that shouldn't worry us. We've had close encounters with them in previously, so it shouldn't worry us too much. All, right, all the best. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Peter Markovic returning to the scene of past glories, his former club, Sydney United. Well, if Blacktown City's path to the grand final was tough, then Olympics was even tougher. They too had to see off the top two. And before that, a keen challenge from last year's grand finalist, Rockdale, as well. Here's Adam Santarossa with the story of Sydney Olympics season. The last time Sydney Olympic tasted success was back in 2011. The side with Greek out, heritage making it a year to remember as they took out the championship and premiership in the same season. The 2014 campaign began with a tricky trip to face rivals Sydney United, but Grant Lee's side came through the test unscathed. A first half effort from William Angel got them on their way. Olympic putting the gloss on the win through a second half goal from Harris Gaitatsis. But Olympic was soon brought down to earth in their first home fixture of the season, conceding two second half goals in a 3-1 defeat to the Blacktown Spartans. Still going Miller, this would be a special goal it is! What a way to cap off a memorable afternoon! By the end of March, Olympic had taken four points from a possible nine after a hard fought draw with the South Coast Wolves. 
The season continued to be up and down, but morale was boosted following a 1-0 win over today's opponents, Blacktown City. Here is Gaitatsis, and he scores again. By the time mid-May came around, last season's defeated grand finalist Rockdale City Suns provided yet another reality check. It was a case of out with the old and in with the new as June arrived, and with it, a double over the season's opening opponent, Sydney United. Still going, Hatsi Maratis! Oh, what a strike! Now they're level! All three goals in a 2-1 win came in the second half. Goals from Dimitri Hatsimaratis and a rare collector's item from Bradley Trelaw proved crucial. There was a second consecutive double in the following fixture over Blacktown. A sole first half effort proving just enough to separate the two sides. Round 16 saw Grant Lee's side show their resilience as the side fought back from 2-1 down against Marconi and a sign that Olympic were mentally ready for a tilt at the finals. Olympic made it eight goals in three games on the eve of the final round of the season. A 2-1 victory over Rockdale, and a case of revenge being a dish best served cold. Oh, well, here's a chance, Hatsi Maratis, it's 1-0 to Olympic. Lovely finish from Dimitri Hatsi Maratis. That was thanks to goals in each half from Dimitri Hatsi Maratis. That three game winning streak enough to secure a fourth place finish on the ladder, and a tilt at finals football, much to the delight of the boss. It was winner takes all in the Eliminator. Rockdale City Suns were the opponents, a side that had pushed them hard in both regular season clashes. The first half efforts from Ryan Keir and Troy Danaskos would ensure a smooth passage, this despite a Marco Yesic response in the second 45. The regular season's runners-up were next. The strong Blackdown Spartans side were expected to provide a stern test, but they proved no match. Sydney Olympic ran riot. And he'll have to do it himself, and he does exactly that! Sydney Olympic have the lead, and it's through Dimitri Hatsimaratis. The fine display culminating in a classy 3-0 win and setting up a clash with Bonnyrigg for a spot in the grand final. But nothing could prepare fans for the drama that was to unfold at Lily's Football Centre. In one of the best games of the season, Go Shirai fired home from close range. He sends it in, here's a big chance, it's the opening goal! It's Go Shirai! But when William Angel was shown a second yellow for simulation, Olympic were forced to play out the second half with just 10 men. Robbie Eunice's penalty 20 minutes from time ensured a dramatic finale to the game, but Olympic withstood a barrage of pressure as the game went through extra time with neither side able to force a second goal. Oh, they should score here, Body Rig. Oh, Eunice got in the way. Aaron Peterson's miss proving crucial in the penalty shootout. Christos Tamaros slotting home the match winner to send Olympic through to today's showpiece event. Sydney Olympic are into the grand final. It's bye bye, Bonnie Rig. So there we go. Sydney Olympic through to the grand final for the third time in four years. And after 137 matches, it all boils down to this today Blacktown City versus Sydney Olympic in the grand final after a nail biting campaign. It is the 14th grand final of the modern era, the second since the advent of the National Premier League, so although you can trace the lineage all the way back to 1956 for these state competitions, two historic clubs about to play off for the trophy. And the two teams just been introduced to uh, the various dignitaries. Uh, in the regular season, Blacktown City did have the better of things, winning two out of the three meetings, and they already, of course, have the Waratah Cup in their trophy cabinet. But Sydney Olympic, as you heard Adam Santorossa say, are bang in form. And perhaps a little omen in their favour is that their season begins and ends at the same venue. And back in round one, they played here and won here against old rivals Sydney United. Will the Olympic defence be able to contain the prolific Travis Major? Can Blacktown nullify the threat of the tricky Japanese player Go Shirai? It's all about to be revealed in the 2014 MPL New South Wales Men's One Grand Final. Adam Santorossi, you've been watching uh, a lot of National Premier League action this season. Who's your tip? Hey, good afternoon, Simon. Good, up, good afternoon, everyone watching out there. Look, I'm going to favour Blacktown City. Obviously, they're, they're in some pretty good form, 11 goals in three games. Sydney Olympic, you know, it's going to take a physical toll on them. They've played one extra game, a long one at that. It went 120 minutes. They've also got uh, an FFA Cup game on Tuesday night. So, look, the pressure's on. The pressure is on Blacktown. I think they're, they're more rested. They've had the week off, and I think we'll see that this afternoon. Plenty of goals in them. I think we'll see some this afternoon. And the absence of Will Angeli was 
so quick and so direct in the preliminary final, which I watched last Sunday. How much of an impact is that going to have on Olympic today? Anything or nothing? Well, it should be a quality game, and let's uh, hope the heat doesn't affect the players too much. It is, I'd say, arguably the warmest day of the year, which is going to make things rather tricky for the players. Yeah, I played on an artificial surface last weekend in a charity game, and I'm still feeling the effects of it. But these guys are a lot fitter than you and I, Adam. And uh, in terms of Sydney Olympic, they will certainly need to be with those two games in the space of 48 hours. Bentley Greens on Tuesday night in the FFA Cup. But this is just as important, if not more so, the grand final of the National Premier League's New South Wales men's won. The two captains coming together for the coin toss. Uh, Travis Major of uh, Blacktown City is actually a co-captain along with Zach Cancross. And Peter Markovic, I wonder what he's feeling today, given uh, he's spent so many years in the uh, red and white of Sydney United. And here he is playing in dark blue in a grand final at uh, his old home. And that extends to the coaching benches as well. Grant Lee, of course, had a season in charge of Sydney United last year of the old NSL back in 03 04. So we're set for kickoff. Uh, our match referee, Stephen Lucas, who's just been promoted to the Hyundai A League for the coming campaign and is just been voted the referee of the year for the National Premier League's New South Wales as well. So we are all set. The 2014 Grand Final, Blacktown City against Sydney Olympic. And away we go. It's uh, Blacktown City, fittingly, playing in predominantly black against Sydney Olympic in blue. And uh, it's going to be Blacktown City. Finished third in uh, the table in the regular season and then came through the finals, winning uh, just two games as opposed to Sydney Olympics three, who will uh, have the early possession. And maybe it's uh, in this early stages, Adam, and given the conditions, it's going to be a matter of uh, the two teams just feeling each other out a little bit. Well, Blacktown trying to hit uh, Mitch Malia early, but uh, Peter Markovic was there, and uh, they'll look to feed Dimitri Hatsimoratis on uh, plenty of occasions throughout the game. The pace of he and Harris Gaitatsis really destroyed Bonnie Rig White Eagles at times, even with only 10 men last weekend in the preliminary final. And these two sides, uh, Adam, have quality really all over the park at this level. Brave coaching, and that's what uh, the fans enjoy watching. Matthew Lewis losing out to Go Shirai. Here's the other Japanese uh, midfielder, Tiger Sueda, who earns his team a free kick. And swept along the line towards the left fullback, Danaskos. Not a particularly uh, great delivery into the penalty area. Touch from Kieran Bacchus. He could uh, be a key for the Demons today. And this is Poscolero out for Giorgio Speranza. Speranza uh, enjoying the big occasion today. He actually missed out through suspension the Waratah Cup final. Earlier on in the season when Blacktown defeated Manly United quite handsomely by 
Six goals to two. Turn by uh, Gaitatsis, Harris Gaitatsis, that is. Two brothers in the uh, Olympic lineup today, of course. This is Soweda. And that's beyond uh, Hatsimuratis. And already Blacktown giving uh, the uh, short squat Japanese midfielder. Has plenty of ability. Tiger Soweda, plenty of attention, Adam. Yeah, I'll have to because he's dangerous in there. He can certainly turn sides inside out. He, he lies deep, but he's got the pace and the skill to just, just cut you up. So I don't want to get stuck into him and, and quieten him. This is Harris Gaitatsis, but uh, Dimitri Hatsumoratis has just gone a little too early. Sarah Ho, the uh, assistant referee on the near touchline, quick to raise the flag. And again, Blacktown looked to hit the front man early. And there's a chance here for Travis Major, but just couldn't reel the ball in. And it's harmlessly behind from a Sydney Olympic point of view. But he is one of the danger men. Yeah, that's something we spoke about in the pre-game. We mentioned his creativity, his eye for goal. And that's another fact that we didn't quite mention is his physicality. He's a big body and he can, he can really throw his weight around there and get on the I know his coach, Mark Crittenden, feels that uh, perhaps he should be playing at a higher level of football. He did have a trial with... Central Coast Mariners a while back. As you said, Adam, in the build-up, shop window time for several of these players, perhaps looking to catch the eye of uh, A-League coaches. Strong challenge on halfway. And this is Ryuji Miyazawa. Beautiful ball. And it's Mitch Marley forcing a fine save out of Paul Henderson, who shows he still has excellent reflexes, even at the age of 38. And... Sydney Olympic have got the free kick for a rather industrial challenge by Yanni Fragoyanis, and he's going to be spoken to by Stephen Lucas. But a good chance there for Blacktown City, Adam. A word of credit, too, for the uh, delivery from Ryuji Miyazawa. He's been one of the class acts of the competition this season. Adam scored uh, plenty of goals as well, I think 11 all told. It's going to be a big loss for this competition and for football in this country. He's going back to Japan to trial with a, a club in the second division there. Can cross, prods it forward, Lewis trying to get the ball out from between his feet. It'll break uh, kindly for Olympic and Braden Sorge has been pursued with vigour by Mitch Malia. Free kick Olympic. Troy Danaskos to deliver left-footed. Should be the goalkeepers. Easy take for Nenad Vekic. He's uh, had some experience of playing overseas. Had a short stint in Hong Kong. With a club called Tun Mun. He was actually picked up by uh, Blacktown when he was playing in the lower leagues of the uh, New South Wales system with the Hills Brumbies last season. Touch inside by Speranza. They always look for Miyazawa. And again, they'll look to utilise the pace of Mitch Marley and Travis Major waiting on the far post. And Peter Markovic taking no chances. Puts it behind for a corner. Kieran Backus to deliver in front of the uh, Olympic fans, or at least the majority of the noisy element of them, but it's a clean catch from Paul Henderson. 
Anderson, who made uh, over 100 appearances in the uh, English lower leagues with Bradford City and Leicester City and made a terrific stop in that uh, penalty shootout last weekend against Bonnie Rig White Eagles to help earn Olympic their spot in the grand final. Henderson so important, not just in terms of his goalkeeping abilities, but also his ability and the way he organises that defence. And was New South Wales Premier League, as it then was, Goalkeeper of the Year a couple of years back. Little touch off by uh, Sasha Makura. This is Lewis. Didn't see Gosharai coming. Speranza. Malia. Again, they look to hit Travis Major, and he uh, just held off his marker, Troy Danaskus, and get the purchase he particularly wanted on the header. Olympic back in control through Braden Sorge here on the right. And forward by Shirai. It's over the top of the central defender and Dimitri Hatsimuratis was onto it in a flash. Just held off by uh, Jacob Poscalero. Cancross with a bit of a nothing ball, really. This is uh, Brendan Hooper into the channel for Shirai to chase. And Shirai is such a tricky player and has uh, such a good understanding with his compatriot Soweda. Watch out if those two uh, get on the ball and start to combine together. This is Danaskos for Olympic. Not a bad ball in, but it's... Uh, Met purposefully by Zach Cancross. Danaskos again. Out on the left is uh, Hatsimuratis. Now Harris Guy Tatsis on the turn. Oh, it comes back off the base of the post. Still alive for Hatsimuratis. And it's deflected behind for a Sydney Olympic corner. But a little glimpse there of the abilities of Harris Guy Tatsis. Turned on a dime. Fired in the shot, only the post, say Blacktown. So good at Harris Gay Tatsis, plays in that number 10 role, just off the shoulder of Hudson Moratis. And I thought Olympic, they'd, they'd gone a bit of a downturn when Evan Postopoulos made, made a move away from the club, but Gay Tatsis has just gone to that next level and well, very nearly had the lead there. It's going to be uh, that man, Harris Guy Tatsis, to take the set piece, going deep towards the far post where Markovic was trying to get a piece of it. Blacktown defend it well and will now look to launch a quick counter. A slight miscue in midfield, but Malia has set them going again. And now Ryuji Miyazawa, but he's got no help, which is why he had to go for goal. And it was a pretty tame effort in the final analysis. Sasha Makura is uh, an interesting story, isn't he? He's been playing overseas at uh, a decent level too in Hungary with very famous old club, MTK Budapest. Had a stint in Serbia as well with Vojvodina. Just break away because Dimitri Hatsimoratis is onto that mistake by the Blacktown defence. But again, a pretty safe uh, take for Nenad Vekic. Tell us about Sasha Makura. Need an opportunity, and, and it could be today. A strong performance. We saw Mila Yedinak, of course, used to play in this competition with Sydney United, got a chance in the A League. He's now soccer his captain, so it shows what he can do. Yedinak played for that uh, club, uh, Voivodina. I think you just uh, mentioned that, didn't you? For a similar career trajectory. Katatsis breaks Kani for Makura. This is Fragoyanis. 
Now Major, Fraco Giannis has continued the run down that right flank. And eventually he's just run out of room. Goal kick. It's interesting, Simon. Uh, we mentioned Olympic to play the extra game, but sometimes it's not ideal to have that week off either. You want to keep playing football. The circus sort of rolls on week in, week out, and sometimes it's hard going so well, Blacktown, to restart those after having a week's break. Well, I wonder in the build-up to this uh, big grand final with Bentley Greens to come on Tuesday, whether Grant Lee has uh, actually tried to pick the brains of Mark Crittenden because, of course, Blacktown actually played and were beaten by Bentley Greens in the uh, round of 32 of the FFA Cup. Maybe grand final week is uh, not the time to try and pick the brains of your rival coach. This is Hooper. That's uh, too high for Damascus. Really is a day in uh, Western Sydney when you feel as though summer is just around the corner. Very warm afternoon. And this venue, of course, will uh, no doubt be full to the rafters in a week or so's time when Sydney United take on Sydney FC in the FFA Cup as well. Competition really has been uh, a boon for clubs at this level, although perhaps not at uh, this particular moment for Sydney Olympic. Grant Lee is not uh, hugely happy with the way the fixtures have fallen. A grand final followed by an FFA Cup tie just two days later. This is Miyazawa. And now Poscolero. Another one with overseas experience. Had a little spell in Serie C in Italy with uh, Bassano. Danascos just uh, making sure that that ball runs behind for uh, a Paul Henderson and Sydney Olympic goal kick. He's another player that's had a, had a trial with the A-League, with the Mariners, uh, in years gone by. So, again, these, a lot of these players out here, they're, they're not too far away. They just need the right moment. And uh, if they seize it today, windows can start opening and uh, they can take the next step in their careers. Hooper clearing his lines, but uh, rather shank that one. Throw in from Speranza. Flicked on by Malia. Tidied up by Hooper. Now with Soeda. Just looking for that little run in behind from uh, Harris Gaitatsis. Quarter of an hour played at the Sydney United Sports Centre. No goals. The closest we've come, Harris Gaitatsis with a super shot after a lovely little piece of movement inside the penalty area. His effort smacking back off the uh, base of the post. That ball's gone out. Throw in black turn. Yeah, we mentioned in the pre-game, Simon, we, we expected a feeling out period. We've certainly seen that. But Olympic is starting to come back into this game. They're starting to get the likes of Suedo in vault, so be interesting to see what they can come up with here. Stroked out to the left by Makura. Speranza. Touched by Malia, but he was uh, clattered into from behind by Bradley Hooper. Brendan Hooper, I should say. Sorry about that. Yeah, just Bradley Trelaw. <laughs> Just watching Mitchell Malia, he's certainly up for the occasion. He's buzzing around. Now Makura with a very clever little uh, dink into the box. And Travis Major was onto it. And that caused confusion for Paul Henderson, who didn't really know whether to stick or twist to go for the ball. He had to keep half an eye on the man. And eventually, he was rather grateful to see the ball drift wide of his left hand upright. Yeah, we mentioned his quality, uh, Henderson, but if, is there is, if there is a criticism, it's sometimes he can be caught in no man's land. He either doesn't come, he doesn't stay. Uh, he needs to make a decision and stick with it. Miyazawa for Bacchus. A miscue from uh, Miyazawa. Not too often you say that at this level. This is Danaskos. Fleet of foot, but a little bit beyond Harris Gaitatsis. 
Vakic uh, with plenty of time to clear his lines. There is uh, Nenad Vekic, 24 years of age. In fact, uh, all of these Blacktown City players under the age of 25. That was a, a policy decision at the start of the season for which, Adam, they received uh, a little bit of criticism. But being in the grand final, I suppose Mark Crittenden will feel rather vindicated. Yeah, and I mentioned it to him in pre-game. In pre but uh, I think that, you know, on days like this, that inexperience could come back to bite you. Sometimes you need those cooler heads. But uh, look, they're, they're taking to it at the moment. Major trying to get around the back of uh, Danaskos, but settles for the corner. Been with the club since 15 years of age, Travis Major. And second uh, leading goal scorer in the MPL 1 with 15 this season. Robbie Eunice, the golden boot winner from Bonnie Rig. It's been a production line for a number of years, Blacktown. We, we mentioned... Uh, the players that have come through, Robbie Slater is another that's come through here. Uh, Joel Keenese as well. Uh, Mitch Malio has come back to his club. Now, variation on the theme from the corner kick, and uh, Malio will lash it towards goal, but didn't have the direction to beat uh, Paul Henderson. Of course, we tend to forget we talk about Sydney Olympic being the story club in the ne old National Soccer League, but Blacktown City had a few years in the old NSL as well. Yeah, and they're the great stories that the NPL allows us to tell these clubs. You know, they have life after the A-League and they have a, a loyal following, which we're seeing today. Olympic have brought plenty of fans out here and so too Blacktown. Here's the quiz question for you, Adam. Who was unarguably the most famous player ever to pull on a, a Blacktown City shirt? Going way, way Kevin back. Kevin Keegan? Yeah, absolutely. Done the research. <laughs> His final club back in 1985 played just two matches for the Demons and scored once. Here's the current number seven, Keegan's old jersey, Travis Major. He may uh, have a new, a new job in a few days. There's some talk around he could be going back to Newcastle United. Well, Alan Pardew is certainly under pressure after a... 4-0 thumping yesterday, that's for sure. Now Makura trying to get a piece of that. Speranza's in the penalty area as well. Back out it goes for Major. Braden Sorge to contend with. Crosses it in towards Mitch Malia. He's not going to beat Peter Markovic in the air, that's for sure. Thought for a moment, Adam, you're going to tell me he was coming back to Blacktown. <laughs> uh, well, if the youth policy wasn't in, he may be a chance, but... Uh I think he's, uh, his best days here are gone. Talking of uh, overseas greats, I uh, was in Manchester a few weeks ago, my UK trip, and I saw former Sydney Olympic coach Tommy Doherty, still sprightly in his mid-80s. Here's uh, Tiger Sueda. All left foot, but it's a pretty good one. Danaskos, 1-2 with Harris Gaitatsis. It's uh, well read, though, by Matthew Lewis. In fact, it was Makura. Beg his pardon. Markovic to uh, switch the point of the attack. Braden Sorge. I haven't seen too many of his uh, trademark forays forward as yet, uh, Adam. You think that might uh, eventuate as the game uh, goes on in the second half? Yeah, I mentioned uh, the battle with Malia down that flank, and, and although Malia has gone central now, and I think it's just caught him on his heels for the moment. He, he's too worried about the you know penetration of Malia and Major that he, he just can't go on those runs just yet. Just being kept honest, perhaps, by uh, Mitch Marley and Blacktown. Good tactical setup by Mark Crittenden. Yeah, there could be an option of maybe switching flanks. I know it's still early in the game, but uh, just to get him a little bit more involved and perhaps where they're not as potent. There is the aforementioned Braden Sorge. Ryan Keir. Back in the team after his uh, suspension against Bonnie Rigg. Just 
Sawada. Left it a bit short there for Kia. Blacktown said we'll have that. Here's Travis Major. Little stumble on the surface. And he's uh, signaled to the Blacktown bench. Perhaps he needs a change of boots, Travis Major. Shirai trying to get involved. He's been quiet in the early stages as well. This is Hatsimuratis. Harris Gaitatsis. Such a neat and tidy football of the Sydney Olympic number 10, but that comes to naught. Harris Gaitatsis, another one with uh, overseas experience, Adam. A couple of seasons in Greece with Panseraikos in the second division. Yeah, and we, we see his quality. He's, he's again one of those players that I, I think he's up to the next level. He just needs the opportunity, and uh, he certainly put his name up in lights this season and uh, very nearly this afternoon. He's also scored twice against Blacktown in the uh, regular season meetings earlier on this campaign. And this is the big one with the trophy at stake. And so far, we've got a stalemate. Speranza. Can cross. A bit of room here for Bacchus. On halfway is Poscolero. Square of him, Can cross. Speranza making his way forward from left fullback. Instead, they go right. For Bacchus again. Now Miyazawa. Good build up this by Blacktown. Patient. And eventually the shot comes in from Miyazawa. And again, it's nothing more really than a routine stop for Paul Henderson. And that's been uh, Blacktown City's lot so far in this contest. Yeah, credit the Olympic defence. They're doing a good job. There's been a little bit of interplay between Malia and Major, but uh, Miyazawa, it's good to see him get into the game. He's been quite quiet early on. But, uh, yeah, good to see him get involved. And uh, Blacktown, they, they did have the advantage early, but it's, they're starting to really lose that battle in midfield now. I know Miyazawa is uh, rated so highly at uh, Blacktown. Speaking of Ken Shembury, the uh, veteran club man who's departing uh, Blacktown after this grand final to go and live on the central coast. He believes that it's uh, an absolute scandal that Miyazawa hasn't been picked up by an A-League club, but of course he is a visa player, which creates an extra problem. Anyhow, this is Major. And now Malia inside the penalty area. As Blacktown look to try and set up a chance. Across the face it comes. And they'll tee it up for Kieran Backers to drive. He took a deflection. In the back of the net it goes. And I think it is Ryuji Miyazawa who may have got the final touch. But what is not in doubt is that Blacktown City lead the grand final by a goal to nil. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. I don't know for sure that Miyazawa wasn't in an offside position. It was definitely very close, but you can't do much about that. Paul Henderson, he was unsighted and just took a touch off Miyazawa. I don't think he knew too much about it either. But uh, look, I mentioned Blacktown were losing that battle in midfield the last few moments, but... Uh, Certainly good for them. And now Olympic have to chase the game on, on perhaps weary legs. Well, there's Mark Crittenden, the uh, Blacktown City coach with uh, the baseball cap. He will be delighted that his team has got in front because they've found creating real clear-cut opportunities rather tricky in these uh, opening stages. A team that has scored plenty of goals in the regular campaign, 51 all told. They've managed to get their noses in front, courtesy perhaps of uh, a rather fortuitous ricochet off Ryuji Miyazawa. Now they've got an injury concern as well, I think, over Matthew Lewis. Yeah, I think he got that in a delicate area. So, uh, although he's back to his feet now. In fact, it's uh, Sasha Makura. Caught one in the stomach, or perhaps even a little bit lower than that. You've got to be careful here, Olympic Blacktown. Sometimes they'll get one, they'll get two or three soon after, so you've got to be careful here. Well, they're away record this season, Blacktown. I suppose you do class this as uh, an away game for both teams, of course. Has been uh, nothing short of 
excellent. Eight wins and just three losses. But the key stat, Adam, during the regular season for Blacktown away from home, they scored 34 goals in just 11 away matches. Yeah, it's incredible going forward, this team. And, and I mean, they scored 12 in the last three games. And, and you think about it, they haven't conceded in that either. And sometimes if you're scoring plenty of goals, you, you're pretty certain you're going to concede as well. Including a 7-0 thumping of uh, local rivals Blacktown Spartans, of course, whose season really fell in a heap towards the end of the campaign. What happened to them? Yeah, well, it, it was unbelievable that last day. I mean, all they needed to do was draw to, to win the premiership and they go down 7-0 and then 3-0 the following week. So, I don't know, there's some things you hear in the background, but uh, certainly uh, did fall into a heap for them. They commanded it for so long and fell at the final hurdle. Says Lewis. Stint with the uh, Central Coast Mariners in the A-League a couple of years back. Makura has Frago Yanis on the right. Goes for goal instead. Rebounds off uh, the Olympic captain Peter Markovic. Good strength shown by Hatsumuratis. Harris Kaitatsis to run at Poscolero. Well, that's uh, a very theatrical tumble from Harris Gaitatsis. Stephen Lucas, the referee, well positioned. No chance that was ever going to be a penalty. And instead, it's Blacktown on the counter. And that's rather wasteful from uh, Matthew Lewis. Yeah, well, that's the danger of Harris Gaitatsis when he's got the ball at his feet, running at defenders. And I mentioned earlier the impact he's had in this latter stage of the season. Evan Kostopoulos made the move to Malaysia and he's filled that gap. And the fact Kostopoulos still made the, the team of the year on the bench shows uh, just what an impact he had. Of course, formerly of the Adelaide United side in the A-League. Now scored uh, four goals in quick succession at the start of the campaign before getting his chance to go overseas. Talking of big names, of course, we shouldn't forget that uh, Sydney Olympic brought over Sotirios Kiriakos for a two-game guest stint right at the beginning of the regular season which brought a lot of publicity to the National Premier League's New South Wales men's one. Here's Sorge being shadowed by Malia. Tries to curl it in behind for Harris Gaitatsis. Nenad Vekic alive to the danger. Miyazawa. That's a beautiful ball and beautifully controlled as well by Kieran Backus. Just the pace on that delivery beats Backus, but... What a raking crossfield ball that was from Ryuji Miyazawa and uh, excellent dexterity from Bacchus as well to contort his body to try and control it. And that's the danger of Blacktown City. They're so interchangeable. Miyazawa can drop deep. That allows Bacchus to run forward as well. So very easily can lose your defender. We played half an hour in the 2014 Grand Final. Blacktown City 1, Sydney Olympic 0. Kieran Backus drive that was deflected in past Paul Henderson by Ryuji Miyazawa. Here's Harris Gaitatsis who's had the Olympics best opportunity striking the post for Grant Lee's team. Danaskos. Michael Gaitatsis trying to get involved. Throwing goes Blacktown's way. Blacktown slowing the game down to walking pace on this uh, very warm afternoon at Sydney United Sports Centre. Lewis. Malia letting it run. Frago Yanis behind him. Malia. It's going to be uh, slightly beyond Travis Major, or at least it should have been. He did well to keep it in, in play. Danascos will clear for Olympic. Can cross just poking it forward for Miyazawa. Speranza.
can cross. And again, they look to go cross fields. And again, Olympic have been sucked in. It's Bacchus with the cross. And Henderson challenging for the ball with his own player. A little bit of miscommunication there in the Olympic defence. Blacktown really on top at the moment, Adam. Yeah, the season control and Olympic need to get back into this game. Just stem the flow because I mentioned the danger earlier. They get one, they very soon get another. Frago Yanis inside for Malia. Blacktown threatening again. Miyazawa trying to curl it, but uh, Henderson watched it into his midriff all the way. Well, clear first time. Well, I'm not sure that's really what uh, Sydney Olympic need at this moment. A big hoof forward. Need to get a bit of possession. Yeah, well, a couple of these uh, issues we, we spoke about in, in pregame. Michael Gaitatz is wide on the left. We've hardly spoken about him. He's just not having the impact as he does in a central role. And, and Brendan Sorge as well overlapping we hardly have seen it so they're two things that I think need to change for Olympic to get back in this game they're certainly not out of it at 1-0 but Blacktown's certainly looking dangerous no uh, Will Angel of course on the left flank today for Olympic sent off somewhat controversially in the uh, preliminary final last week second yellow for simulation now uh, Miyazawa with the attempted 1-2 uh, Kieran Backus had been bowled over yeah, a bit of debate around that Will Angel decision. It's, I guess, if you're looking at the FIFA rule book, it's probably the correct one. But uh, well, I was behind the goal, Adam. I thought Chris Griffiths Jones got it spot on, mm. but I uh, sense that Sydney Olympic fans disagree. <laughs> Certainly, been some talk on Twitter and Facebook. I agreed in the call, but uh, yeah, I think the right decision in the end. Frago Giannis with a delivery from the set piece, volleyed clear by Ryan Keir. Now Harris Gaitatsis, but a uh, heavy touch. And then a trip on Mercura. Blacktown again quickly back in possession. Just can't find that groove at the moment, Grant Lee's team. Now been in fine fettle coming into this uh, grand final. Lost just two of the last 14 matches. Although in fairness, one of those was to Blacktown City. No foul on Sueda initially, but... Uh, the subsequent challenge was uh, a little bit rough by Mercura. Markovic finding a teammate in space. Now Sueda. Danaskos. And he's picked out Hatsimuratis, who a little portion of the ball. This is Go Shirai, who's barely seen any possession at all. Squared up, though, by Braden Sorge. This looks promising for Olympic, and that's unfortunately for Grant Lee's team where it breaks down, but they'll set it up again through Sorge on the right. Now Go Shirai. Tempted 1-2, and Shirai's back on the ball again. Fires towards goal. It's blocked by the Blacktown defence. This is Soweda, and Poscolero got a piece of it. One or two claims for handball, particularly from Michael Gaitatsis. Waved very uh, sternly away by Stephen Lucas. That's what he does so well, Sawita. Just on the edge of the 18-yard, he picks up the crumbs. Scored plenty of goals this year in that fashion. Backer squares it up for Makura. Lewis, good football list by Blacktown. Speranza forward from left fullback. Lewis letting the ball run across him. Then cutting inside one defender and the shots, not for the first time, takes a deflection. This time off Braden Sorge. And Paul Henderson will be relieved to see that one fly behind for a corner. Yeah, and I've just given Sueda a wrap. And if there is a criticism of his game, it's his, his ability to, to track back. And he's just jogging into the 18 yard box now, getting onto the back post. And certainly Lewis had plenty of room there. Yanni Frago Yanis to uh, deliver the corner. Flicks off an Olympic head. It was the captain, Markovic. Makura beaten to it by Kia. Damascus again, rather hopefully up towards halfway. 
Poscalero. Bacchus. Blacktown are having the lion's share of possession and all the best moments as things stand. Olympic just haven't been able to find their rhythm. This is Go Shirai. They need to get him into the game a lot more. And this man too, Taiga Soeda. The Nascos pushing forward from left back. It's not a great ball from Soeda. Well, that's uh, perhaps a little symptom of what's going wrong for Sydney Olympic at the moment. Taiga Soeda and Go Shirai, so influential this season, Adam. And neither really able to have an impact. Yeah, and you've got to credit Blacktown City for that. They just can't get out of their groove today, Sydney Olympic. And we mentioned the fitness and the toll they've physically taken in the last few weeks. It could be biting today. Blacktown playing the game at their pace. Can cross. Once a National Youth League player with Sydney FC. Got on the uh, fringes of the first team as well. Now they look to transition the ball through midfield and Miyazawa up towards Travis Major. Markovic does his job. Yeah, Cancross is one of those players, again, that's, that's had a little bit of experience at that level and certainly not the end of his aspirations to go there. And we've seen the likes of Sasa Ogonovsky come out of the VPL. So certainly shows that uh, you've got a bit of experience. They're hard to come by a quality centre-back. Just a shade over five minutes to go before uh, half-time, Adam. Going to be an interesting team talk for Grant Lee in particular. He's got so much talent in this uh, starting 11. What to do about Blacktown's dominance? Yeah, they've got to be careful they don't concede before half-time because a 2-0, 2-0, you know, this close to half-time, it's certainly going to take some coming back from, but... Uh, I don't think they look for personnel. I think it's just tactically at the moment the changes, but it's obviously they don't want to concede. Yeah, this is what we spoke about. They don't want to concede here three or so minutes before half time. The tall timber, Sasamakura, coming forward. He'll be a target. Can Fragoyanis find the right delivery for Blacktown? Already a goal to the good, courtesy of Ryuji Miyazawa. Makura's gone near post. That's where the ball is aimed. He flicks it up in the air, and Henderson has to come out and punch. Mali will challenge Danascos in the air, and the Olympic man wins it. Now can the Dark Blues perhaps launch a counter of their own? Hatsimuratis. Now Harris Gaitatsis do a lot of their good work, dropping deep towards halfway to try and set up the play initially. It's a clumsy challenge by Speranza on Braden Sorge. 
Stephen Lucas is just kind of a word with the uh, Blacktown left fullback. He has uh, had his issues with discipline this season. Picked up five yellow cards in the regular campaign. And as we mentioned already, missed the Waratah Cup final through suspension. Yeah, it's a silly challenge as well. There wasn't a lot on for Olympic, and uh, now he's given them a good chance at a set piece. Well, this would be uh, an excellent time for Olympic to try and get themselves back into the game. Got a whole clutch of players at that far post. Harris Guy Tatsis with the delivery, and it uh, did indeed find a blue jersey. I think it was maybe Markovic. Or was it Brendan Hooper? Anyway, it was Brendan Hooper. In any case, it was uh, flicked wide off the head of the defender. Yeah, they are dangerous at the set piece. They do have some tall timber there, Olympic, and certainly don't want to give them opportunities like that to get back in this game. Blacktown have been so dominant. These last few minutes. Well, we're into the final minutes of uh, regular time at the end of an intriguing first period. Olympic have had their moments, but just really. The one clear-cut chance. Blacktown, similarly frustrated early on by Sydney Olympic, have really grown into the contest. And here they come again. They've got Travis Major on the right here. And Peter Markovic prevents further damage to the score sheet. Backus with a flat delivery towards Makura. And it comes for Fragoyanis. Trying to angle it in towards Major. Speranza will pick up the scraps. Back for Lewis. Oh, Makura had come short, but in the end it wasn't a bad option from uh, Lewis to cross towards the far post. And again, Sydney Olympic... Uh, a little nervous in defence with Henderson not sure whether to come or stay on his line. Yeah, and that's the danger of Miyazawa, the man that got the touch. He uh, he nips around and that, it's that interchange between Major, Malia, Miyazawa. Can catch defenders napping. They've certainly got to be on their toes. The three M's. The radio station call that, isn't that? Triple M. At the moment, it's about uh, the two Ps for Sydney Olympic, patience and perseverance. Because as the halftime whistle blows, they're not only a goal down, but they've really been second best for much of that opening period. They did have a good early chance, thanks to uh, Harris Gaitatsis, who really created it for himself, smacking his shot back off the base of the post. But Blacktown took the lead when Kieran Bacchus's shot was deflected in by Ryuji Miyazawa. And that gives us a half-time scoreline. Since when Blacktown have been dominant, incidentally, a Blacktown City 1, Sydney Olympic nil. Yeah, look, it's gigantic been. sale time again at IGA, so you can afford to shop big. Save a gigantic half price on Peter's ice cream, plus you could win a year's worth of groceries. That's the way I like it. It's gigantic sale time again at IGA, so you can afford to shop big. Save a gigantic half price on finished dishwashing tablets, plus you could win a year's worth of groceries. That's the way I like it.
Yeah, and I think that's sort of telling at the moment. I think uh, you're seeing the physical toll. I mean, they, they don't seem to have that spark. Sawada and Shirai just not getting as forward, not not having that that nippiness about them and uh, just not doing enough to support Hatsi Murata. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do in the second half. And I certainly know Grant Lee will have some ideas because uh, he's been a genius all year with the tactics. So, But uh, a time now, let's have a look at some of the exciting action across the year. It's certainly been an exciting one. Let's check out some of the highlights. The IGA National Premier Leagues provides us with many things. It's a competition backed by tradition, passion and a rich history. Quality goals are high on that list and let's remind ourselves of some of the stunning goals we've witnessed this season. The competition has seen the men between the posts make their names, from former stars to the future ones and the best kept secrets. They may not get the same plaudits as those that score at the other end, but they're just as crucial. Let's look at some of the stunning saves this season. Now we've seen the stunning saves and some of the magical goals in season 2014, but how about some of those other moments? It's the only highlight reel that players hope they won't appear on, is some of the near misses for season 2014. Scoring is one thing, but what will really get you noticed is your method of celebration. This season we've seen some beauties, and we've seen some that hopefully we'll never see again.
gigantic sale time again at IGA, so you can afford to shop big. Save a gigantic half price on finished dishwashing tablets, plus you could win a year's worth of groceries. That's the way I like it. Well, it's certainly been a cracking year in the NPL New South Wales men's one. We saw some of the highlights there. It's a cracking afternoon here at the Sydney United Sports Centre. At the moment, Blackdown City FC lead by a goal to nil. Ruji Miyazawa. We didn't know too much about it, but it ended up in the back of the net, and that's the main thing at the end of the day. The game's still up for grabs. We see the goal here. Ruji Miyazawa has got a touch. And Paul Henderson just wrong-footed. Plenty of fans, of course, you can see here at the Sydney United Sports Centre. We were around the grounds today. Finding out how they feel the game will go. Sydney Olympic fans in great numbers. So too Blacktown City FC. We spent some time getting their opinion on how today's game would shape out. Yes. Who's the winner today? The Olympic must win and they play better. It was deserved to win. Let's get these right. kids waving Sydney to the Olympic. Come on. Okay, who are you here to support? Oh, look, we're really neutral to be honest. He just plays in the set program. Okay. So he plays in this program, so we just thought we'd come and watch the grand final. But really, we're just here to look to uh, to see a good game. What's, you. what's your prediction? What's the score going to be? Um, three 0 Who to? Uh, uh, Town. Let me let me get you to say three 0 to Blacktown. Go. Three 0 to Blacktown. And what's your prediction? Uh, two 0 to Sydney Olympic. Sydney Olympic, fellas. Okay, what's the score going to be? Uh three 0 our way. What's the score going to be? Sydney Olympic, 5-0. 5-0? Sydney Olympic. Okay. Oh, Sydney Olympic, of course. Mate, we're Sydney Olympic. I'm going to win. What about that? What's oh, going to I reckon 2-0. 2-1. 2-1. 2-1. 2-1. Okay. And then, do you know, 6 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, well, the fans certainly showed up in great number here this afternoon. It's good to hear their thoughts. And we have another man joining us in the box. We want to hear his thoughts about the opening 45. It's Football New South Wales. Media manager, Mark Stavalakis. Mark, welcome. Adam, thank you for having me again. As you said, the opening 45 minutes, it's well set up. Blackdown, of course, lead one goal today, but uh, what to do in the second half of the Olympics? Yeah, it's been a pretty frenetic start to the uh, to what we knew was going to be a pretty tense uh, grand final, and then the opening standards just proved that. Obviously, uh, Miyazawa, you mentioned before, uh, didn't know much about that goal, but um, you know, at the end of the day, that's what counts. It's hit the back of the net and they're up. Uh, but um, yeah, look, a few nervy moments for Blacktown City. Uh, that was a fantastic chance for Harris Gatatsis who hit the uh, the bar, which was which was a, a decent effort. But um, all in all, it's a pretty tense uh, first half. I've been si sort of standing on the sideline, uh, hearing both coaches, and I can tell you that they're quite vocal, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, Sydney Olympic. We mentioned in, in the pregame they played a game extra. It was a, an intense game. It was wondering who went to penalties, so they've certainly got uh, more time in the legs than, than of course Blackdown City FC. Does this seem to not get in, in, out of first gear here this afternoon? How do you see things going in the second half? Is it a tactical change? Is it personnel? How do you see the changes coming up? Yeah, look, I think with Sydney Olympic, I, I guess the tough thing is that they've got one eye on, on this game and unfortunately, you know, it's it's not too long until they're back up for another game on Tuesday, which is a big one too. So uh, the boys are obviously feeling the, the pinch at the moment. But yeah, no doubt Grant Lee's obviously going to move for more of an attacking uh, uh, display in, in the second half. Tamaris, I'm sure, will come in. Um, to uh, to add that uh, void at the moment, but uh, look at the end of the day, it's um, yeah, it's for them to chase. Blacktown City, obviously, the week off has uh, you know bowed them really well at the moment. They they look like they're they're really enjoying themselves today, and uh, yeah, they're they're enjoying this moment as well. So it's uh, it's going to be all to play for the second half. But um, yeah, Olympic will definitely come out the first 10, 15 minutes. They'll come out firing. And it's the same scenario today, of course, uh, as last week, last year. Sydney United were bounced out. They were the premiers. Same to Bonnie Rig last weekend. Sydney Olympic. Came from the elimination final, just like Rockdale. So history repeating in 2014. But what about this season? There's been some late drama. There's been some action. A 93rd minute goal from Robbie Eunice decided it on the final day. It's uh, been one hell of a year. Yeah, you couldn't have scripted any better this year, to be honest. Obviously, it was shades of what Man City did a couple of years back when um, you know Aguero scored right near the end. So uh, look, with Robbie Eunice, the way he did what he did was was fantastic. It was great for the, for the competition. But uh, well, look. One thing's for sure, Sydney Olympic have that attitude, never say die, and I know that they're going to give their 100% uh, come second half. Mate, thanks for your company at half time. We'll get back into it, mate, uh, and all the best for the rest of the year. Thank you very much. Back out for uh, the second half. With uh, the sun starting to set. Way to our left, but it's still a very bright, very warm afternoon. 
T-shirt weather in the stands. I'm sure they've uh, enjoyed watching what they've seen so far. But Blacktown halfway to what would be a record third championship since the reorganisation of the leagues, Adam, back in 2001. Yeah, Sydney Olympic, we mentioned they need to get back into this game. I mean, it is only 1-0, but Blacktown are starting to really show their dominance there in the latter stages of the first half. And it's not out of Olympics grass, but they just need to get some players into the game. Michael Gaitatsis has been quiet. So too Sorge and Sawita and Shirai just not having the effect that they, they seem to have from week to week. Second half underway. Olympic kicking from right to left in this second period. No changes made as yet by either coach, but I'm sure that uh, won't be the case through to the 90-minute mark. And Olympic trying to launch the opening attack of this second period through the uh, pacey Dimitri Hatsimuratis. And he's been well marshaled so far by uh, the likes of Zach Cancross and Jacob Poscolero. And Blacktown were relatively comfortable. That one chance aside in the first half, created and fired in by Harris Gaitatsis. This is uh, Malia. Had uh, plenty to say in the first half. Travis Major, 15 goals this season. Looking to attack Markovic and fires in the cross, but uh, an easy gather for Paul Henderson, wearing the uh, headgear in this second half to keep the sun out of his eyes. Lights are on as well here at the uh, Sydney United Sports Centre. I'm not quite sure we need those, but uh, anyway, they're on nonetheless. A little bit more shadow in this third of the pitch as Saweda swings the ball across. A good ball looking for his compatriot, Go Shirai. And it was uh, a third Japanese man, Ryuji Miyazawa, who tracked back well at the concession of a corner. Yeah, that's what I like about Ryuji Miyazawa. He gets up and back. He certainly does it at the scoring end of the pitch, but he doesn't certainly does the defensive duties as well. And I'll tell you what, he was well and truly in the race for player of the year. He would have got my vote. He's got his uh, 13th goal of the season. Lucky 13 at the moment for Blacktown in this grand final. Here comes the corner, though, and the goalkeeper's got a piece of it. Fired back in, though, by Markovic. And it's cleared on the edge of their own six-yard box by Blacktown. And now they'll look to launch a counter down the right. But uh, there's precious little help here for Jacob Poscolero, but he's managed to find some. Here's Poscolero. Again, the defender, remember, on the ball as he tries to return it towards Miyazawa. But... Uh, an easy gather for Henderson. And the pace already is uh, noticeably picked up at the start of this second half with conditions perhaps just easing somewhat. An Olympic coming out with intent at this uh, start of the second period. Yeah, we mentioned uh, last weekend Olympic went down to 10 men and Grant Lee went to three at the back and went all out attack because he wanted to win the game in 90 minutes and He's going to be of a similar view this week with the FFA Cup on Tuesday night. So expect them to go all guns blazing. Braden Sorge profiting briefly from uh, the mistake and then bundling over Miyazawa. This is Sasha Matsura. We've been told during the uh, halftime break by uh, Sasha's dad. That's the correct pronunciation, which is fair enough. I get irritated when people call Manchester United just Manchester. So hopefully we've got that pronunciation correct now, Adam. Yeah, there's some interesting ones in these competitions. They've certainly kept me on my toes this year, but uh, I meant I'm, I'm, we better get it right because we're going to be calling it a fair bit in this second half. This is Brendan Hooper. The long diagonal looking to utilise the pace of Hatsumaratis, who just about manages to keep it alive. Under pressure from Poscolero, back on the angle. Here's Harris Gaitatsis. It's blocked by uh, Matsura. This is Sueda. Little dink in towards the edge of the six-yard box. And again, Blacktown deal with it. Matsura trying to release Mitch Malia. Well, the phony war, if it was a phony war in the first half, uh, Adam is clearly over. These two teams are going for it. Yeah, and I think we expected it. it certainly, it, it's a bit strange to see this game at 1-0, given the, the goals and the attacking threats that both sides have in them. So I think as players tire, this game will really open up and we're certainly not going to stay at 1-0. Here's Hooper. 
Sorge has uh, got forwards. That's what he loves to do. And we didn't see enough of that in the first half. Here's Michael Gaitatsis. Let's it run. Hatsumaratis. And then Goshirai is on the end of it as well. Now Sawada inside the box. He goes down. Appeals for a penalty. Waved away by Stephen Lucas. But Olympics starting to pose a little bit more of a threat. And now on the counter, it's Kieran Bacchus for Blacktown City. Good action at both ends of the park. And look at the spaces. Game starting to get a bit more stretched. Lewis to roll it into the path of Mitch Marley up. And that's going to be over the top for a goal kick. But uh, what about the penalty shout at the other end, Adam? Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Uh, on, on first view, I didn't quite think it was a penalty. So we went down. But uh, look, I think that chance was generated. Michael Gaitatz is into the game. And that's something I called for. He needs to come more centrally. He certainly can get involved. He links up brilliantly with his brother Harris. And already Olympic look more dangerous. Well, it was uh, Tiger Sueda who took the tumble. Stephen Lucas was well positioned. Well, he's blown the whistle for that one. And you can hear what the Olympic fans in the background think of that. Yeah, but I think Grant Lee will be pleased with how his side has started this opening five minutes. They're certainly getting more possession and the likes of Gay Tatsa, Sawita certainly getting more involved, which is what they were lacking there in the first half. Beckich with the clearance, met by Hooper. Nodded back into an area by Hatsumaratis and uh, Olympic will have the throw. Well, we're finally hearing the chants of uh, Olympic for the first time this afternoon. They've been a bit quiet, the uh, Sydney Olympic fans, Adam. Yeah, they're certainly hearing a great number. They haven't had a lot to cheer about, but they can sense as well that their team has certainly started this second half a lot more brighter. Kia with the switch. Ghost your eyes, head up. Sorge in pursuit. Goal kick the outcome. Good to see more support given too for Dimitri Hatsimaratis. He's a workhorse. He runs all day. He'll chase everything, but sometimes can be left a little alone up front and needs Gaitatsis, Michael Gaitatsis as well. Sawita play in behind. Well, one in the air by Hooper. Now Shirai is clattered into late by Zach Cancross. That's going to be the first yellow card of the grand final. No complaints from the uh, joint captain of Blacktown City. He was very late. Look for Dimitri Hatsimaratis to hit this one. He has scored from this range, some absolute belters this season. and Not a lot of signs about it. He just gives it everything. And as I say that, he gets waved away. Well, it's a fair way out and very central as well. Harris Gaitatsis on uh, set-piece duty. Plenty forward for Sydney Olympic. It's pretty central, as I say. Perhaps a little too straight, really, for Olympics uh, liking. Gaitatsis goes low and it finds its way through a whole crowd of bodies before... Vekic plunges on the ball. Neatly killed by uh, Kieran Bacchus. Haven't talked a lot about Bacchus. Has had a super season and, of course, comes with uh, some pedigree. Had that little stint in France with Le Mans and then contract offer from Siena in Italy. Had a short stint at Perth Glory as well. Very much a player looking to get back into the Hyundai A-League. Yeah, injury really hampered him at the Perth Glory, but he was brilliant for Blacktown against Bonnyrigg. Got them the spot in the grand final. He scored the last-minute penalty, and he's got so many, so many stars, so many assets going forward. He can sometimes be overlooked, Kieran Backus. This is Sueda. Markovic. Olympics certainly seen a lot more of the ball at the start of this second period. And they're pushing Braden Sorge forward whenever they get, they get the opportunity as well. Which was uh, 
Very much a feature of their game in the preliminary final last week, but we've not seen it too much today. That's a, a blatant infringement from Harris Gaitatsis, and he's going to join Zach Cancross in the referee's notebook. Yeah, certainly knew what he was doing, but uh, Mizawa, he got so much pace, you can't let him break away. So Gaitatsis doing the intelligent thing, copying the card. Professional foul, which uh, always seems a bit of an oxymoron yeah. to yes. call it that. Certainly knew what he was doing, but... Uh, I like what I'm seeing from Olympic here in the second half. They've made the changes. You mentioned Sorge getting into the game. Floated free kick towards uh, Mitch Malia. And it comes off the Nascos last. Be a corner. Which gives uh, Mark Crittenden's team the chance to throw up the likes of Zach Cancross and lend a bit of height. It's been taken short, in fact. And it's drilled in low by Kieran Backus. Matthew Lewis will retrieve it for Blacktown. Here's Travis Major. Fires it low across again. And uh, Henderson with a safe pair of hands. Ten minutes played in the second period. If you are just tuning in, 1-0 for Blacktown, courtesy of Ryuji Miyazawa. His final game in Australia before he goes back home to Japan. Got a slight deflection on the shots fired in by Kieran Backus. That's what separates the teams at the moment. Never surrender is the message from the uh, Olympic fans. Well, I'm sure they won't do that, but uh, they've got a game to chase. Grantley in the background there. It's Peter Zorbus, the assistant coach in the foreground. I can tell you Peter Zorbus has actually missed... A family christening today to be at this grand final. I don't think he's hugely popular with his uh, relatives. He's the only one who said no, can't make it. Speaking to me on Friday at the uh, gala dinner. Played in a grand final, of course, in the uh, last year of the old NSL for Parramatta Power. Was a loser on that day. His team is uh, losing this afternoon as things stand. Was a very good player in his day, Peter Zorbus, for Olympic amongst uh, other clubs. Adam. Yeah, it's a busy time of year this year. I had myself had my sister's wedding last night, my other sister's birthday today, but they know football rules. And Zorbus, one hell of a player and a big part of what Olympic's done this year. This is Michael Gaitatsis. Things a little too tight for Tiger Sueda, who uh, took over the role vacated in midfield by Peter Triantis on his departure to Sydney FC, and latterly Kingsley Williams as well, who's gone overseas to play in Spain. Mitch Malia's pace should reel this one in. Crossing towards Miazar at the near post, and Brendan Hooper puts it behind for another corner. Yeah, that's what I spoke about throughout this call. It's that interchange going forward. Miyazawa, he starts on the right. He cuts in central. Major, Malia, constantly moving and can just catch a napping. And that's all they need, half a chance. Miyazawa, a touch there. Henderson's racing off his line. Suddenly it's 2-0. Well, we thought it was going to be a corner. In fact, it's uh, been given as a goal kick. Henderson to pump it upfield, flicked on by Sorge, who is now playing in midfield, as he did in the second half of last week's uh, preliminary final against Bonnie Riggs. So they have, nominally at least when they're going forward, reverted to that back three again that Grant Lee employed to such effect against Bonnie Rigg. It's a good touch by Michael Gaitatsis, and Gosharai is onto it in a flash, but Nenad Vekic just did enough, and Blacktown survived. But Sydney Olympic are coming. They're starting to create opportunities, Adam. Yeah, it's all out attack. You mentioned he switched to that back three, and it was incredible last week to see them bossing Bonnie Rig with 10 men all game. They didn't run out of steam, and it's all they've known all year, all out attack, and it may just work for them this afternoon, certainly back in, in this game. Yeah, they lost uh, Will Angel pretty early on in the second half of that uh, preliminary final, but a terrific display by Grant Lee's team, full of uh, energy and no little quality as well. In the end, they had to... Uh, Win it on penalties, but they could have quite easily oh. 
high. And a little bit of negativity creeps in. One Jose Mourinho is an exponent of that. But it's great to see both these coaches. They they love to play football. It's attacking football. Certainly what these fans want to see. And I think we're going to see a fair, a fair bit of it in this last 45 minutes. That's some Aratis. Can't dig that one out. And it's Ryuji Miyazawa trying to break forward. Sorge getting back to do his defensive duty. This is Go Shirai. Back to Soweda. Harris guy taps this in space centrally. Oh, that's uh, miscommunication, really, from Sydney Olympic. Good field position, rather wasted. Travis Major popping up on the right hand side and firing in the cross. Headed out by Markovic, the Olympic captain. An hour played at the Sydney United Sports Centre. Blacktown 1, Sydney Olympic 0 in the 2014 New South Wales NPL Grand Final. Vakic outside his area. He's got to be quick. So way to closing down the space. Blimey, he was like a whippet there. Really gobbled up the meters. Forced the turnover. Hooper under pressure from Backus. He's been robbed on halfway. This could prove costly for Olympic. Backus only has Malia in support, though, and he's been somewhat wasteful with his pass. And yeah. Instead, Danaskus will tidy up. Yeah, it was a poor option there from Backus. He didn't have a lot of support. Obviously, Malia well marshaled there, but. Could have just held it up and waited for the support to come from midfield, but certainly would love to have that one over again. This is Ryan Keir. Very much the glue that holds the Olympic midfield together. Danaskos looking for an option. Soeda provides one. Keir. Sorge starts his movement forwards. Here he is on the ball. Blonde-haired fullback with the ponytail. Little one-two with Gosherai. Good movement this by Olympic. Decent ball in. Punched away by Vekic. Another corner for Sydney Olympic. Yeah, there's no secret that Brendan Sorge getting more influential in this game. and it's Corner's been taken quickly. Fired across and the header is on target. And Nenad Vekic just about deals with it second time around. Brendan Hooper it was with the initial efforts. And Vekic got two strong hands behind the initial save and was then forced to back up and flip it over the top of the crossbar. Good pressure by Sydney Olympic. Yeah, they continue to press and Blacktown just hanging on for the moment. This one has certainly changed. The tide has certainly turned. More orthodox corner this time. Deep. Skims off the head of Poscolero. Michael Gaitatsis. All the way back for Tiger Sueda. Olympic have still got plenty forward. It's a disappointing cross, though, from the Japanese midfielder. Nodded down, though. Here's a chance. Michael Gaitatsis fires it in. It's Can Cross who makes the block. And again, the game becomes stretched. Matsura can't find a way through. Well, we only have the one goal at the moment, Adam. But if you're a betting man... You wouldn't have too much on it staying that way. Yeah, as I said earlier, it's certainly more goals in this game. Both these sides love to hit on the break. They're so dangerous going forward. Danaskos, outside of the boot for Sueda. Decent ball in, Go Shirai. Well, probably heading is not his real goal, although he did score with his bonds against Bonnie Rigg last week. Puts it wide of the target. It's going to be interesting. Mark Crittenden may even be looking at perhaps putting another body in midfield because they're just getting overrun at the moment. Michael Gaitatz is coming more into the game. We mentioned Sword moving forward. Perhaps Danny Choi, Shane de Cunha could be options. Both workers. As I say that, he clears his bench. They all start warming up. So this is the time when they do like to make a change, coaches. Sydney Olympic putting the ball out of play. Courtesy of... Uh an injury concern over Travis Major, who's back up on his feet now and OK. Matthew Lewis, if he's uh, sporting, which he is, will return the ball to them. Well, tense moments, these in the grand final. Just over 
25 minutes left for play. Blacktown leading by the narrowest of margins. Sydney Olympics starting to exert some pressure of their own. Troy Danaskos, infield for Ryan Keir. Go Shirai. Touch around the corner just beyond Harris Gaitatsis. Sawada trying to make it into a good ball. Michael Gaitatsis trying to dig it out. Harris Gaitatsis is there as well. Zach Cancross says, I'm going to take control for Blacktown. Now Lewis. Just been rocked back on their heels the uh, last five or ten minutes or so. And Mia's hours unaware of uh, Go Shirai stealing in on the blind side. Good first touch from Harris Gaitatsis. Took him clear of Matsura and then he's dragged down by Kieran Backus. And Stephen Lucas goes to his pocket again. Backus goes into the notebook. Pressure building on Blacktown City. Yeah, definitely. And Backus just showing his frustration there. You can see his sides are on the back foot. Olympic is starting to surge. And clear tug of the shirt, and rightfully so. Yellow card comes out. Can Olympic make this pressure tell? Had uh, one decent opportunity through Brendan Hooper's aerial prowess. So Ada's penalty appeals waved away. It's another decent ball in towards Markovic this time. Came off Poscolero. Blacktown should be able to clear. This is Bacchus. Neat feet from the Blacktown midfielder. Malia the option wide right. It's Braden Sorge always full of energy. Trying to trap back, but his touch is not the best. And Henderson forced to come herring out of his goal. Now he's got to get back and quickly. They square it up for Travis Major, Blacktown. And on this warm afternoon, uh, one or two players who are perhaps feeling the intensity of the occasion. Matsura with a little one-two. Markovic steps across. Now Miyazawa puts it into an area, but it's going to be beyond Speranza. Goal kick. Yeah, I'm not sure what Sorge was doing there. Clearly not favoured on the left foot. He should have just cleared it to the safety of touch, but Henderson scrambled well, but... A few hearts fluttering around the Sydney United Sports Centre. Well, almost at the midway point, Adam, of this uh, second half. Just a one-goal cushion for Blacktown. I suppose, given these conditions and the enormity of the occasion for these two teams, this is where the coaches really are going to earn their money in terms of their substitutions and their tactics in these closing stages. Yeah, well, I think I mentioned earlier the change I'd be making. They're just getting overrun in midfield, Blacktown. I'd be putting another body in there, but... To do that, do you withdraw someone from the front, the front three, which they do catch side so often on their break. So it's interesting. And from Olympics' point of view, maybe uh, Christos Tomaras, Mark Stavroulakis uh, did mention his name in the half-time break. Good player to uh, be able to utilise off the bench. Doesn't often play the full 90. This is Danaskos as Olympic uh, seek to continue their stranglehold that they've had over Blacktown for much of this second period. Danaskos in field. Harris Gaitatsis. Danaskos with the delivery. It's up in the air somewhat uh, by Hatsimuratis and then Advekic had to come and make a strong claim, which he did. A quick release too for Frago Yanis. Now with Bacchus. Now they can try and utilise the pace of Travis Major. He's on his own. He's got two defenders to deal with. Markovic stands him up and concedes the throw in. And this may be the final fight of Sydney Olympic. We mentioned the tiring legs and the fact they've played some big games over the last few weeks. And if Blacktown can ride this one out, the fight might start to go out of Olympic. Well, you have to give Grant Lee's team a lot of credit, though. They did look pretty heavy-legged in the first half. They've, from somewhere, found some real energy in the second period. Grand finals tend to do that to teams, in fairness. This is Bacchus. Oh, and he's found a way through for Frago Yanis. And they've got a man free on top of the box as well. Matsura, it wasn't a great ball from Frago Yanis. If it had been, Blacktown may well have been in for a second goal. 
Cairn Cross. Wide right is Bacchus. Exchanges passes with Fragoyanis. Here having a nibble at the ankles of Miyazawa, but uh, they retain possession of the ball. Oh, and that's not the sort of pass you want at this stage of the game from Sasha Matsura. And here comes Adam, the first change of the grand final. Yeah, Michael Gaitatz is making way. It's that man you spoke about, Tamaris, scored the winning penalty last weekend to get the Olympic here, and he will provide a little bit of width, more natural width than Gaitatz's, but been a frustrating afternoon for Michael Gaitatz. It's hard to get into this game. He's not playing in a position he's that familiar with. Will Angel's suspension has uh, left a bit of a gaping hole on that left flank for Sydney Olympic. Can Christos Tamaras fill it? 25-year-old who scored that winning penalty against Bonnie Rigg last weekend. He's a very technical player and he's played at a decent level in Greece for Kozani and Apollon Calamaria. 100 appearances uh, over in Europe. Watch out for his set pieces as well if uh, Olympic get within range. Here's uh, Kieran Backus. Into the final 20 minutes at the Sydney United Sports Centre. We've got uh, all the presentations to come for you a little bit later on as well with uh, our Master of Ceremonies, my Fox Sports colleague Tara Rushton, and we'll have the announcement of uh, the winner of the Robbie Slater medal as well for best on ground. Who'd be your pick at the moment, Adam? I think if There's it a curveball question yeah, for you. If it remains the way. Uh, look, I, I, I mentioned my, you know, how much I rate the likes of Miyazawa, and he'd be up there. Travis Major's worked incredibly hard. Here he is on the ball. It's a good delivery as well from Major out to that left-hand side. Matthew Lewis has Braden Sorge for company. This is Miyazawa. Runs into a coldy sack and Kia. Puts it up towards halfway where the tricky Go Shirai waits, but he's had a frustrating afternoon, has Shirai. Is that Cancross too strong for him? Yeah, Major I spoke about, he'd be up there. Hasn't got a goal to his name, but he's worked, does a lot of stuff off the ball that people don't really see. And Miyazawa buzzing around, of course, has the opening goal. But even Vekic, in I'm impressed with him. He's a young player that, you know, sometimes these younger players don't handle the occasion. It's either deer on the headlights or it doesn't phase them. And... Well, he's certainly shown it hasn't faced him this afternoon. Made some, some good saves and some high-pressure ones. Well, I think I might be leaning towards uh, Kieran Backus. I think he's uh, been excellent as well in that midfield area. Blacktown, as you can see, have got a bit of a problem at the moment over one of their co-captains, Zach Cancross. Went down uh, awkwardly after dispossessing Go Shirai on halfway. Yeah, this is certainly not what they want. He's so crucial to their defensive makeup. He's the heart of their spine and Seems to be back to his feet, although a little gingerly. Still very much on the radar of uh, A-League clubs, Sack Cancross. Had trials with Brisbane and Central Coast and Perth when they were uh, in this part of the world during their A-League campaign last season. Another one of those uh, voted into the MPL All-Star team for this season. He'll be back on presently, you'd imagine. Olympic fans wanting a foul by Mia Zauer on uh, their new man, Tamaras, but Miyazawa has shown great balance and great strength to surge upfield and now finds Travis Major. Major fires in the shot. It's blocked by Markovic. Important intervention, that by the Olympic captain. And again, the spaces appear in midfield. Harris Gaitatsis on the ball. Now with Dimitri Hatsimuratis. He has Sueda outside him. It's a tired-looking pass, though, from Hatsimuratis. And the chance is gone for Olympic. Yeah, poor pass from him. Just didn't quite uh, show the calmness on the ball that Olympic fans would have liked. Damascos leaving his uh, pass a bit short. Tiredness very much a feature of both teams' play. Understandably so on this warm afternoon. Harris Gaitatsis with a hopeful ball in towards Hatsimuratis. Ryan Kier on the slide. They'll try and set it up again through their captain, Markovic. Now with Hooper. Angle ball in towards Hatsimuratis. Frago Yanis stretching to deflect the ball away. Soweda. Ryan Keir. Square for Brendan Hooper. Now with Braden Sorge. Now has Matt Lewis for company. 
Tamaras to clip the ball in. Poscolero will put it out for a throw in. Cancross back on the part, but he doesn't look too clever, does he, Zach Cancross? See if uh, he'll be able to continue. They do have uh, defenders on the bench. So it is ball in. Another test for Vekic, and he's passed it once more with flying colours, just sticking out a big, strong right paw. Good little spell of pressure again by Olympic. Ryan Keir. Tomaras. No way through for Sydney Olympic. Cushion header by Hooper. Keir squares it up. Damascus to fire it in from long range. And Cancross may be uh, playing on one leg, but he stuck that uh, boot out to make the deflection. Now with Saweda. Into the final quarter of an hour at a denser park. Blacktown still leading through Ryuji Miyazawa's first half goal. A play very stretched. Two very tired teams. How on earth is Sydney Olympic going to back up for the FFA Cup on Tuesday night? Here's Miyazawa. They could seal it here, perhaps Blacktown, but it's just beyond Travis Major. And the grand final remains alive. Yeah, and this is a time where perhaps Blacktown need to look at not parking the bus, but making a tactical change and just putting a few more bodies behind the ball. But it's certainly not the way they play. They're, they're all out of attack. They've scored 12 goals in the last four games. It's hard to temper that when it's come so naturally. Well, they're going to get a bit of a breather here due to the uh, injury to Mitch Malia. Sydney Olympic are also going to make their second change. Ryan Keir is uh, the man replaced. There's the new man. We mentioned they're devoid of options on the bench, attacking ones at least. Sparakis, though, was good last weekend, filling in for Ryan Keir, so Grant Lee knows he can do the job. This is Tomaras, Soeda. They shrugged off the attentions of uh, Matsura long enough to fire in the shots and the deflection gives Olympic the corner. Pitch now completely bathed in shade after the uh, brilliant early afternoon sunshine. Sydney Olympic still full of energy. Harris Gaitatsis with the corner goes deep this time. Met by Poscolero. <coughs> Blacktown going to make their first change. Mitch Malia, the man replaced. And uh, well, you picked it, Adam. Perhaps understandably. Discretion the better part of valour for uh, Mark Christendon. He's going with Daniel Araujo. He's uh, not exactly a defender, but... Uh, Certainly more defensively minded than uh, Mitch Marley, that's oh. for sure. Yeah, he's certainly putting another body in midfield and Aurelio certainly will work hard, does his defensive duties, but does offer something creatively as well. So, South American heritage and he has uh, skills to match, Daniel Aurelio. He needs to put in a shift here for Blacktown because uh, they've been under the pump in this second half. Certainly in terms of weight of possession, can Olympic find the chances? Harris Gaitatsis clips the ball in. Blacktown stand firm. Anywhere will do for Miyazawa. No outlet of Mitch Malia now, of course. He's uh, off the park. Blacktown have perhaps set their stall out to defend what they have. So where does ball in? Might drop for Tomaras. Oh, what a goal! What a goal from Christos Tomaras on the volley. An absolute peach. And we are tied up at 1 1 in the grand final. Well, Nenad Vekic, he's been brilliant this afternoon. I don't know what he could have done about that. Tomaras, we mentioned he scored the winning penalty last weekend. Well, what a fortnight he's having. And what a game we have here. It's all Olympic. 
And Christos Tamaris hits it, and it's destined for the for the top corner as soon as he hits it. 1-1. One, well, one. well, that's just wonderful technique from Christos Tamaras. Nenad Vekic did not even smell it. He's been very good this afternoon, Nenad Vekic, but as I said, I don't know what you do about that. Well, this a goal worthy of gracing a grand final. And perhaps, just perhaps, we are heading for extra time, which, Adam, is the very last thing that Grant Lee will want with an FFA Cup tie coming up. But uh, I'm sure he'll take it now that his team is back on level terms. Well, they showed us their heart last weekend against Bonnerig. They went down to 10 men. They didn't stop. They're certainly not going to do it here. But, uh, yeah, definitely the last thing they wanted. But I think we could see a late goal here. This one's certainly not over. It's not well, going to stay 1-1. On the balance of play in the second half, you'd probably say Olympic deserved that equaliser. Well, they haven't really created anything clear-cut this afternoon. It's been these half chances, and that certainly was there from Tamaris. Well, the question has been asked of Blacktown, who just prior to that, of course, had to take Malia off and perhaps showed their hand a little bit by uh, bringing on the more defensive Daniel Arroyo. The Olympic bench, rather happier than they were five or so minutes ago. And Grant Lee, of course, who's uh, looking to follow in the footsteps of his former teammate Gary Phillips in lifting a championship as both a player and a coach of the club, has seen his team draw level thanks to a simply wonderful goal from Christos Tamaras. As you talk, Simon Kieran back is just limping around in back play, so he may not be 100%. Well, it's the walking wounded for Blacktown at the moment. Malia off with a knock, and certainly Olympic looked the sprightlier of the two. Do they have anything left, Blacktown? That's a really good ball over the outside of the boot from the substitute, Araujo. Travis Major, force wide. Can he find the right delivery? The answer, unfortunately, for Blacktown is no. Well, it wasn't much of a ball, but Backers gave up on it. Certainly wasn't going to chase that, and he's down in his haunches at the moment. So you'd think Olympic players would start to fill the pinch. It's not the case. Here's Araujo. He's filling around the corner for where Brennan Hooper was. Miyazawa squares it up. Backers. Socks roll down to his ankles now. Frago Giannis joining in with the attack. This is Matsura. Has to go around the outside. Gaitatsis stuck like glue to his task and earns the goal kick for his team. It's Olympic with their tails up with less than 10 minutes to go in normal time of the grand final. If you read the body language out there, it doesn't read well for Blacktown City. Players on their haunches, hands on hips. Olympic the brighter. Tamaras didn't get a, a call there. He's had his pocket picked by uh, Sasha Matsura. Saweda. Can Olympic go on and find a winner? Hatsimurata is still full of running. Poscolero sticks with him. Up towards Bacchus. Good turn by Kieran Bacchus. Major the outlet again on the right. This is Araujo. Miyazawa. Markovic to snuff out the danger. Again, the play becomes stretched. Frago Giannis joining in. This is Travis Major. Oh, it's a rotten ball from Major. Mistakes starting to creep into both teams' game. Tamaras, lovely couple of step-overs to get rid of two midfielders from Blacktown, and he goes centrally, punched down the middle, looking for Hatsimuratis. Vekic out to the edge of his box to claim. Well, I like two tired boxers in the ring now trying to throw the knockout punch at him. Yeah, and I think we're going to see a change very soon. Kieran Bacchus, he's certainly struggling out there. Got Danny Choi on the bench who has a bit of spark and he'll provide plenty of run. And Bacchus certainly showing the signs of fatigue. I don't think he's on his own in fairness. I think there's a few that would uh, like a breather. Here is the aforementioned Bacchus. Showing his quality today. It's been terrific in patches, but uh, the entire Blacktown team has been 
driven back by a relentless Sydney Olympic in this second half. And for that, I suppose you have to pay huge credit to their strength and conditioning. The end of a long season and with FFA Cup commitments, as we said in the first half, they looked pretty much out on their feet. But it's Blacktown who look more the spent force at the moment, Adam. Yeah, we used the boxing analogy earlier. And uh, look, I'd hate to be a judge of this one because uh, Blacktown dominated the first half and it's been a complete role reversal in the second. So, as you mentioned, both looking for that knockout blow. Well, they've got five minutes of normal time to try and find it. They won't... Uh, Find it through that route. Sydney Olympic, quick release from uh, Nenad Vekic. This is Bacchus. Nobody in close attendance for Blacktown. Hooper. Braden Sorge. Tamaras. He's given us one goal a moment. Can he find another? This is Go Shirai. Just held up briefly by Poscolaro. Olympic still threatening. Harris Gaitatsis can't find a way through. Bacchus to tidy up. Prago Yanis, but Blacktown are very deep. Only major within sight of the halfway line. Sasha Matsura has joined him now and is on the ball. It's a lovely cultured pass from Matsura. Major, could he perhaps win it for Blacktown? Held up. Good defending by uh, Peter Markovic initially and then up towards halfway. Deft touch from Harris Guy Tatsis. Heavy touch though from Tomaras who then left the foot in on the challenge. And he's going to go into the referee's notebook as well. So he's blotted his copybook a little bit there after that wonderful goal. Yeah, he's very lucky he didn't connect because it would have been a very different colour, I have to say. But uh, probably booked for intent more than the foul itself. Had the stud showing. But, uh, something we haven't spoken about, Simon, is this surface. It's Olympic have uh, shown it hasn't phased them. Of course, Blacktown play on it at Lily's Football Centre. And you mentioned fatigue. Playing on that artificial surface sometimes can... Grass surface at uh, Belmore, at least their home games anyway. These surfaces uh, have improved markedly since the early days when the ball used to bounce like a beach ball. Lewis, decent ball in. Here's a chance for Arroyo. Olympic scramble it clear. Blacktown perhaps find a second wind. Now, Poscolero is out of position and Olympic could be in here. Hatsi Moratis. It's an important intervention, though, by Zach Cancross. Helped out, too, by Speranza, although Olympic are claiming the foul, and Stephen Lucas agrees. He's fortunate he won the three kick. He should have just played it first time. Shirai was in acres of space, and with his pace, would have been one-on-one -on -one with Vekic, but this is a huge chance. And I mentioned Hatsi Maratis earlier at the set piece. Won't be giving this one up. That's a good decision by Stephen Lucas. Giorgio Speranza was late on Hatsi Moratis. We've seen one spectacular goal from long range, beat Nenad Vekic.
50 fouls this afternoon. But again, a chance for Olympic to send some numbers forward. and well, He's just uh, barged him out of the way, hasn't he, uh, Major? Maybe in the old days that would have been considered just uh, an old-fashioned shoulder challenge, but not in the modern game. Forward it goes and uh, helped on by Hooper, who has been a threat at set pieces. Looks odds on as though we're going to be an extra time, almost a minute of stoppage time up already. I don't know whether you caught the uh, fourth official's board to signify how many minutes there would be, Adam. It's going to probably be a bit. This is Hatsa Maratis going for the spectacular and got way too much elevation. Yeah, expecting a few minutes of additional time. Obviously, Mitchell Malia went down, Cancross as well. So certainly time and, well, haven't we seen some late drama this season in this competition? We mentioned at halftime Robbie Yunus clinched the premiership in the 93rd minute. So never say never. This is Arayo. Soeda still full of energy, tracking back. Markovic spoons it up in the air. Cancross won it. And we've almost played two minutes of stoppage time. Can either team forge one last opportunity to win it in regulation? Here's Harris Gaitatsis. Low cross. Cancross, heavy first touch. And then Tamaras looking for his second. What would surely have been the winning goal. He can't get it past Vekic. Tamaras has gone down with an injury as well. Sydney Olympic have somewhat stopped. And Blacktown could perhaps go on and try and win it. The boozer from the Olympic fans. This is Matsura. And he's threaded it through for Miyazawa. But it's beyond the uh, Japanese midfielder. And that might just be that. And Stephen Lucas is now going to have to run a full 90 metres to check on the welfare of Christos Tamaras. Here's his earlier efforts. It was on the half volley, a difficult one to control and uh, the Blacktown defender got a piece of him as well which has left uh, a Sydney Olympic player in some discomfort. Yeah, there were a few jeers from the Olympic fans. Blacktown obviously playing on, trying to catch them on the break but that's probably fair enough from them. Referee's job to stop the game. Well he stopped it for good now. Three minutes of stoppage time is enough. And we will have extra time in the grand final. What a grand final it has been. And that man receiving attention at the moment has been central to all the theatre in the second half. A wonderful volley to bring scores back level after Ryuji Miyazawa had put Blacktown ahead, deservedly so in the first half. So we're going to have an extra 30 minutes, then possibly penalties. But at the end of normal time in this 2014 grand final, we have a scoreline of Blacktown City 1. Sydney Olympic 1. It's gigantic sale time again at IGA, so you can afford to shop big. Save a gigantic half price on Peter's ice cream, plus you could win a year's worth of groceries. That's the way I like it. from Ryuji Miyazawa totally wrong footing the veteran goalkeeper Paul Henderson and that was Blacktown a goal to the good and that was an advantage they held until very late on in the game the 79th minute but Grant Lee made a substitution Adam brought on Christos Tamaras off the bench and boy did it pay dividends yeah changed the game and well how about that for a grand final if this season needed anything else spectacular in it and uh, yeah what an impact he's had look at this Brilliant technique, and Vekic can't do anything about that. Simply watch on. The man who scored the uh, winning penalty in the shootout against Bonnie Rigg last week. That uh, is a moment to savour for both Christos Tomaras 
and Sydney Olympic. And that's taken us into extra time for the second time in a week for Sydney Olympic. Their energy levels have been phenomenal. And they're going to need all that uh, energy reserves, given uh, the fact that they played extra time and went to penalties last week. And, of course, they've got another game in 48 hours against Bentley Greens in the FFA Cup as well. Yeah, I was astounded last week to see them go down to 10 men and, and still control the game. But this is going to be some ask. I mean, Blacktown had the week off. They're fresh. You certainly wouldn't see it on viewing the two sides. The body language, as I mentioned, Blacktown on their haunches. Olympics still buzzing, growing in confidence the longer the game went on. So you've got to credit that to Grant Lee. He certainly brought them back into the game tactically, moving Sorge forward. Michael Gay taps us into the game for the short time he was on there in the second half. And Tamaris, well, what, a, what a substitution that's been. He can claim the credit for that. And certainly on top here at the end of the 90 minutes. Mark Crittenden there with uh, the baseball cap on, trying to rally his troops. They looked uh, out on their feet the final 10 minutes or so. They lost Mitch Marley, of course, who went down with a knock. There have been several others suffering with cramp as well. And Sydney Olympic just seemed to grow in stature as the game went on. Grant Lee, of course, a veteran of grand finals. Years gone by, played in three such occasions in the old NSL. Two with Sydney Olympic, a winner in 1990, a runner-up in 1989. And lost with uh, the old Sydney City Club as well back in 1985. He knows what uh, these occasions are all about. And he's put together a fantastic young team that has shown terrific energy to haul themselves back into this grand final. And funnily enough, Adam, he did say at the start of the season after taking over from Peter Sakenis, this was going to be a transitional year. They didn't expect to be in this grand final this season. Yeah, and they struggled a little bit initially. They just couldn't get a run of games together. And, uh, well, you talk about... A racehorse, you know, getting the preparation right for a big race. They've certainly done that. They've, they've timed it to perfection. They've gone on a great run. And, look, if they can bring it out today, they've, they've come from a long way behind, but up against the ropes as well. And, uh, well, it's all to play for in the next 30 minutes. But you mentioned Mark Crittenden. Look, I, I, I don't know that he would make the change in hindsight. Uh, Mitch Malia, you know, Kieran Backus has struggled. Malia didn't have the greatest of games. He may have even had a knock as well, but... You know, in hindsight, I don't know if he quite would have made the same change. Well, you mentioned he does still have Danny Choi in reserve. Uh, Winger that has plenty of pace. And just looking at the, the bench, I wouldn't be surprised if Danny Choi is about to come on for Blacktown, which might just give them that little bit of verve back at him. Yeah, Danny Choi, he's a very interesting player. He, as I said, buzzes around, plenty of run, got a great engine. He can find the back of the net as well. Can play in the front line or, or roll in midfield, so... I just felt they lost their spark when Malia went off. They went too defensive. It certainly needed to happen. Obviously, it was 1-0 when he made the change, but obviously when they conceded, they were certainly just stuck on their heels, and Choi may just bring that little bit of spark back. Now, interestingly, the man he's replaced is the left-back, Giorgio Speranza. Does that mean a change of formation, or does that mean just a rejigging of personnel? You've seen a lot more of Blacktown this, city, uh, this season, I should say, than I have. Yeah, I think tactically he knows that Olympic is spent. I mean, they're certainly not showing it, but you know the miles they've put in their legs in the last few weeks, it's going to bite eventually. And I think that substitution and the change tactically is a sign of that. He's trying to pinch him on the break. Choi's got pace as well. Away we go. First period of extra time. We've uh, had a full start, unfortunately. And it looks as though Matthew Lewis might uh, just be dropping in at left fullback to be, take uh, the place of... Uh, the now departed Giorgio Speranza. Danny Choi to play up ahead of him on that uh, left flank. So into the first period of extra time. Blacktown City won. Sydney Olympic won after the 90 minutes. Two very tired teams. Here's uh, Ryuji Miyazawa, scorer of the opening goal in the first half. Frago Yanis into the channel for the muscular Travis Major to chase. It's a physical challenge, but uh, no whistle for the foul. And Blacktown have earned themselves a corner in the opening stages of this first period of extra time, Adam. Yeah, and this is a dangerous time early on. We mentioned Henderson can sometimes be susceptible to a little bit of indecision coming off his line. So it's been good this afternoon, but I need to do the job here. Frago Yanis with the corner. Oh, and uh, Henderson did need two bites at it. Launches one upfield for Gosher. Oh, that's an intelligent header 
from the uh, Japanese player into the path of uh, Hatsumuratis, but Sydney can't make, or Sydney Olympic, I should say, can't make any further progress. Instead, it's uh, Araujo. And now Travis Major inside the box. Travis Major scores. 16th goal of the season. Blacktown have the lead for the second time in the game. And Travis Major, the New South Wales National Premier League's Player of the Year, shows why he is so highly rated. Great finish. Well, the tide turns again in this one. And Travis Major, that's why he's the Player of the Year. What a move it's been, transforming from a midfielder. He started as a defender. Now playing as a number nine, and that's all he needs. Just gets off the shoulder of the defender, takes the touch, and then buries it past Henderson. And suddenly, 2-1. Well, they looked out on their feet, Blacktown. Instead, it's Paul Henderson who has to pick the ball out of his net for a second time. A little bit of extra quality, perhaps, from Travis Major. He's had a great season. Now he's capped it off with a goal in the grand final. The only thing Mark Christendon will be saying, probably, Adam, is why didn't you give me that goal two or three minutes earlier? They've still got 28 more minutes to play. Still plenty of time for Sydney Olympic to find their way back into the contest for a second time. Here's Tomaras. His shot takes a deflection. It spoons up in the air and it was awkward for Vekic. And he grabs it and releases it for Araujo. Here's the goal scorer, or at least the score of the second goal, Major. Now Danny Choi, still fresh legs, of course, off the bench. Araujo has still uh, got plenty of energy as well. He was a late change. Like Danny Choi. Olympic rock back on their heels after dominating the second half of normal time. Soeda with a crossfield ball. Chested down by Hatsumuratis. Appeals for the corner. And those appeals are heeded. Still plenty more left in this game. And just on that major goal, that's what he does so well, his movement. It's, and that's the hardest thing to learn when you, you're not a traditional forward. There's the corner towards Hooper, who's uh, been a threat before. Had one effort uh, well saved by Nenad Vekic. And Simon Blacktown have made a change. Shane de Cunha has come on, immediately following the goal. He's trying to work out who they've replaced. I'll get confirmation of that for you in a second. But, uh, yep, Shane de Cunha is definitely on the park for Blacktown. Their third and final change of this grand final. Meantime, no way through for Harris Gaitatsis. Outside of the boots, looking for Danny Choi from Sasha Matsura. Day starting to turn into night here at the Sydney United Sports Centre. It's been a splendid day weather-wise, perhaps even a little bit too hot for the players. Spirakis turns it out wide right for Braden Sorge. He kicks it out of play uncharacteristically. Miyazawa prods it forward. Throw in Blacktown. They'll be in no hurry to take it. Kieran Backus, I can tell you, is still feeling uh, that right side of his groin area. Really struggling to get through at the moment. The Blacktown need him. Now they've made their third and final change and we believe it's Zach Cancross, who had uh, an injury earlier on in the game, who's uh, made way for Shane de Cunha. Shot fired in from long range. Easy pickings for Henderson. De Cunha has just dropped into the central defence. That's an uh, area vacated by Cancross. 
Here's his uh, new partner, Jacob Poscolero. Almost had his pocket picked by Hatsimuratis. De Cunha under pressure from Soweda. It's a pretty weak clearance. Spirakis. It's uh, beyond Braden Sorge. Not the sort of delivery he wanted. Yeah, it's an interesting change too because De Cunha, it's not his natural position. I think we'll find Matsura dropping a little deeper too, just to provide some cover. He has played stopper before, Shane de Cunha. His uh, more favoured role is as a right fullback, still just 19 years of age, and he's been away with the young Socceroos, Paul Ocon's team, in recent weeks. I know Paul Ocon rates him very highly, maybe not necessarily as a central defender. Now that's a good piece of play from Kieran Backus to pick the pocket of uh, Troy Danascos. Anaskos has got back to help him. Oh, what a shot fired in by Bacchus. And that is a terrific save from Paul Henderson. Well, Bacchus may be playing on one leg, but he managed to find the energy there to show a clean pair of heels to Danaskos and then find the angle for the shot. A credit to Henderson. Fine stop. Yeah, well, hasn't he come to life? Really struggling. We see him on his haunches there, but really struggled at the back end of the 90 minutes. But I don't know what they did in the change between normal time and extra time, but... Certainly showing a little bit more sprite. Another change for Olympic. Braden Sorge, not but at his best today, has uh, been replaced by Christopher Godoy at Bascour. Utility player of uh, Chilean heritage. He yeah, actually spent some time with the Costa Rican national side when they were out here, just to add some numbers to training. Yes, I remember that well. Jerry Gomez acted as their uh, media officer as well, former NSL star who won five premierships. Has uh, somewhat suffered with injuries of late. Bascour, which is why he's been used mainly lately off the bench. This is Danny Choi. Olympic have another player down at the moment, which is why Blacktown have kicked the ball out of play. Yeah, Harris K. Tatsis. On the deck, and that's obviously not what Grant Lee would be wanting to see because if you're going to turn to someone, he'd be the main one you'd be looking at to try and spark something. Well, Guy Tats is not hugely happy at being dragged to his feet by his teammate Yanis Barakis, but... Like Blacktown, Olympic have made their three changes. So what the two teams have now, they must uh, persevere with through to the end of extra time. Remember, all these players semi-professional. They have day jobs as well. Some of them must be uh, falling asleep at their desks come Monday morning. Here's Kieran Backus. Again, evidence of tiredness. First half, Kieran Backus would have uh, put that pass on a plate for a teammate. He's managed to find Fragoyanis here, but uh, he loses out. And then one back by Backus. Major. Throwing goes Blacktown's way, although it did appear to come last off Kieran Backus, who's spending more and more time bent over on his haunches. I'm not sure whether that's the injury to the groin or... Well, it's just general tiredness. I have the feeling it might be more of the latter. All these players have put in a hell of a shift. The Blacktown have found a second wind. More importantly, they've found a second goal through this man, Travis Major. Choi squares it up. Fragoyanis. Major careful not to stray offside. Bit of keep ball from Blacktown. Miyazawa stroking it out wide left for Lewis. That's good skill by Araujo. Back it comes for Miyazawa. Possession, the name of the game at the moment for Mark Crittenden's team. And why not? They've got the advantage. 
Araujo. Sparakis for company. Go Shirai joining him. And that's good play by Blacktown. They've earned themselves a corner with some patient play there. Yeah, intelligent play by Blacktown. They know that not commit too many forward. Don't want to invite Olympic in on the break. And they know they've got the lead. Don't need to force the issue. Olympic just can't see how they're going to get back in this game for the moment. Well, it's been a, a real seesaw affair, hasn't it? Blacktown good in the first half. Olympic better in the second. First period of extra time. Blacktown back in the ascendancy. Throw in for Olympic. Sueda. Spirakis. Hatsimuratis. Not on the same wavelength as his teammates. And they've committed numbers forward, Olympic. Backus and Major trying to play them on their own. That's a really good ball from Travis Major. Here's Danny Choi if he can get around Brendan Hooper. And he would have been through for a one-on-one -on -one with Paul Henderson. But solid defending from Brendan Hooper. Yeah, just couldn't get the ball out from under his feet there, Danny Choi. And he was one-on-one -on -one if he could beat his defender. But Olympic had plenty of numbers to deal with that. But again, it shows the sign. Fatigue playing its part out there. Harris Gaitatsis with the floated ball towards Go Shirai. He really has not been at his best today. Been uh, rather peripheral to Sydney Olympics play. Major for Poscolero. Frago Giannis. Not too much ambition from Blacktown. A couple of minutes to go in the first period of extra time. Now they'll try and ramp it up. Frago Giannis runs the ball out. Throw in for Sydney Olympic. Yeah, I think that influence of Shirai and Sawita, they haven't quite been as influential because you've got to credit Blacktown. They've made them accountable both ways. They've had to track back. and Now that's an error as they try to find Spirakis. Miyazawa said, I'll have that. And here's Travis Major. This could finish it. He's got a defender in front of him, and in the end he got caught between two stools, really. Should he shoot or lay it up for a, a teammate? He opted for the latter, and the pass was a tied one, as is that from Kieran Backus. Players really struggling. A hot day followed by an intense grand final. Can Sydney Olympic throw a counterpunch? Suedas so ball, it's a good one. It's a really solid fist away from Nenad Vekic and had to be too. I'll tell you what, Gosharai for such a small man, his uh, aerial prowess and threat is not to be sniffed at. Yeah, superb there from Vekic. That's what you want your keeper to do. If you're going to come off your line, make sure you get there. and Well, you get a bit of a protection as the keeper and if the player's in front of you, you go through them. And that's what the goalkeeper did. So Ada trying to prompt again for the Olympic front men. Time almost up in the first period of the extra 15 minutes. Back is trying to steal for Mark Crittenden's team. And he's trying to go around the back of Brendan Hooper. He's had a very solid game at uh, centre-back for Sydney Olympic alongside Peter Markovic. This is Tiger Sueda running at pace. Got a bit of a lucky bounce, but it's uh, careered into the path of Jacob Poscolero. Back us to slow the play down. We're into stoppage time at the end of the first period of extra time. Danny Choi on the ball. Major makes a run. Is he onside? No, he's not. He just went too early. Pretty tidy finish, it must be said, from Travis Major. But Sarah Ho's flag was raised immediately. Yeah, some of these Olympic players have certainly given up. The art of defending. It's all out attack for the moment for them. Blacktown leading by two goals to one. Shirai with the cross towards Hatsimoratis, but again, Nenad Vekic plucks it out of the air with ease. And there we go. End of the first period of extra time and Blacktown City 
have one hand on the trophy, courtesy of Travis Major. They lead by two goals to one. Now, well, Sydney Olympic, if they've got any cards up their sleeve, they need to play them now. They are tiring, and, and Blacktown City, they will hit on the break. They've got the pace. They've got the goal scorers, Travis Major, Miyazawa, Kieran Backers as well. And as Olympic commit, you're pretty certain that Blacktown will find a third goal. Well, let's have a look at uh, Blacktown's second goal now. Scored by Travis Major. It was a very deft touch from Sasha Matsuro. Deserves a lot of the credit, but that's a very tidy finish by Blacktown City's top scorer this season. Yeah, I mentioned Major's movement, and you'll see it here. There's two Olympic players on the scene, and they're just caught ball watching, really. Major kills it with the first touch, and what a finish. And that's what can happen when you're riding a wave of success like he has. Of course, player of the year this year. Brendan Hooper, perhaps, having the uh, finger of blame pointed at him. Just switched off for a moment. He's had an excellent game otherwise. And that's, that's fatigue. I mean, they're quality defenders. They know they must do better. But, you know, when you're feeling the pinch physically, you're not quite there mentally as well. Well, they've got to rouse themselves again, Sydney Olympic. They've done it once. And they've got 15 minutes to try and pull this grand final out of the fire. At the moment, Blacktown, who absorbed some pretty heavy punches of their own in the second half of regulation time, have got their noses back in front. There's the Olympic bench. Peter Zorbus patrolling the uh, technical area. And away we go. Second period of extra time. Blacktown City 2, Sydney Olympic 1. All the changes made by the two coaches, Grant Lee and Mark Crittenden. Has been an absorbing showpiece occasion, worthy of uh, a dramatic campaign, which the Premiership went down to the final day. That was won by Bonnie Rig White Eagles. Ahead of Blacktown Spartans, neither of those two teams have made the grand final. Instead, it's three versus four. They put on a good show, Adam Santarossa. Yeah, and we expected a, a goal fest really this afternoon. The amount of goals and, and attacking options these sides have, but it's been a chess game. We mentioned first half was all Blacktown, second half Olympic, and once again, extra time, Blacktown back in control. So it's ebbed and flowed, and who knows? We know this competition has the old twist in the tail, and there may be one yet to come. Harris Kaitatsis angles the free kick out towards Sueda on the left. His ball in field and Sueda will continue the run. Crosses uh, forced Brendan Hooper a little deeper than he'd have liked to have been. This is Bascor to try and tee it up. And the shot on the angle is just wide of uh, post and crossbar from Harris Kaitatsis. Not too far away. And that's the danger of Sydney Olympic. They've got the quality players on the edge of the box that can just create something. And Kaitatsis, we saw him hit the post earlier. So he's dangerous. Edge of the 18 yards. Sawida as well as another. And Olympic aren't going away. They're still firing shots. Blacktown have to be on their top. Given away though by Sawida. That could be fatal. Down goes Bacchus. No foul given. Advantage play. The shot is on target from Danny Choi. Well fielded though from Henderson. Who sets Olympic going again through Troy Danaskus, Sueda. Seeing a lot of the ball for Sydney Olympic. Touch back by Spirakis. Now with Tomaras. Hopeful ball really towards the edge of the Blacktown penalty area. Punch forward by Matsura. We've seen how resilient a side Sydney Olympic can be in the finals already. And that's the test that uh, is in front of them again with less than a quarter of an hour left here at the Sydney United Sports Centre. Anywhere will do for Daniel Araujo. Picked up in the deep by Brendan Hooper. This is Bascour. Giving Yanis uh, Sparakis a bit of work to do. But he's uh, managed to retain possession. 
Everybody behind the ball for Blacktown. This is Spirakis. Attempted layoff from Tomaras. The onus really on Sydney Olympic now to come out. Try and force the game into a penalty shootout, which is how, of course, they won through to this grand final just seven days ago against Bonnie Rigg. Yeah, that's smart from Blacktown City FC, just forcing the long ball out of Olympic there, just getting body, bodies behind the ball, clogging up the space. They like to play the little one-twos in behind, Shirai Sawida. Just couldn't get it working then. Left short for Danny Choi. Sydney Olympic going route one. Now it's dropped nicely for Hatsimoratis. Oh, and he's butchered it. Yeah, it was horribly. A tired shot on goal. And when you, your side's number nine and the lone striker, you're really going to put a bit more behind that. But he's had a frustrating afternoon, Dimitri Hatsimoratis. Made to work for everything. Ditto. Go Shirai, who. Provided a very neat little layoff again with his head there for Dimitri Hatsimoratis. As you said, Adam, a rather tired looking finish. Almost five minutes played, second period of extra time. Spirakis under pressure from Bacchus. Baskur. Little chip forward looking for Soweda. Danny Choi is there for Blacktown. Araujo gets it back off Kieran Backers. This looks promising perhaps for Blacktown. Major with the outside of the boot. Frago Yanis. Major has gone down inside the penalty area and looks quizzically at referee Stephen Lucas, who tells him to get up. But still, Blacktown come and the cross was across the face and. Yanni Fragoyanis couldn't afford to take a chance. He knew that Danny Choi was somewhere behind him. Corner ball. Yeah, decided to go safety first, but uh, Godoy Basker just left a trailing leg there on Travis Major and certainly don't want to invite Blacktown in when you're chasing the game. Well, we're into the 111th minute of the grand final. That number is unlucky in cricket. Will it be unlucky for Sydney Olympic? Here's Danny Choi. Sidesteps one challenge. The second is blocked. Matsura rather slices his attempt on goal. And then that's a really decent effort, which just flashes over the top from Kieran Backus. And that would have sealed it once and for all. Yeah, that would have been the icing on the cake. And Kieran Backus has been good this afternoon. Love to see a goal next to his name. Miyazawa, Araujo has had a good impact off the bench. Looks to win it with the curling shot, but uh, again, not troubling Paul Henderson, who's anxious to get things restarted quickly for Olympic. They know that uh, time is starting to run a little short on their grand final dreams. Back it goes for Vekic, who's been excellent between the sticks for Blacktown. Big heave-ho forward. Markovic trying to play a captain's role, but he's giving it away. It's three on two here for Blacktown. And Ryuji Miyazawa could seal it here. It's Miyazawa! Just white. Oh, yeah. What a run. And why didn't he square it up for Danny Choi? Well, it was three on one at the back. He had to seal it. And he's blown the chance. He had Danny Choi and Bacchus overlapping. And that's what's going to happen. Olympic get desperate. Got to invite Blacktown in. You've got to take the chance. Miyazawa. Big fan of his, but just a little greedy on that occasion. Well, he had the chance there to uh, write the headlines once and for all in this grand final. Olympics stay alive, but again, to use the boxing parlance, they are on the ropes at the moment. Well, they're, using, they're looking for the knockout punch, and it's within them. They've got the players out there that turn something from nothing, but Blacktown, the big chance to kill them off there.
Grant Lee can only look helplessly on from the Olympic bench. He's made all his three changes. That's a clumsy challenge, though, from uh, Matsura, who's been otherwise excellent in the heart of that Blacktown midfield. Yeah, I think Grant Lee's done a tremendous job getting his side back into this game. Tinkered with them at half time, pushed some players forward, and really they dominated the second half. And you could argue probably should have been ahead. Maybe this is their best chance from a set piece. They've had it just over. It's that man Hooper again, I think, is it? Or is it Markovic? No, it's Markovic who's uh, suffered a bang to the head as well. Yeah, I think Travis Major has a bit of colour running down his shirt. Which means that Markovic could be in uh, a little bit of trouble, but he's a tough guy. Up on his feet, says, I don't need attention. Let's get on with it. Or at least let's do it on the sidelines. It's Travis Major who's got the claret, as you rightly pointed out. <coughs> Lots of players using the uh, mini break to stretch out the hamstrings and the calves. It's been uh, a long afternoon and now early evening for these two sets of players. I'll tell you what, just to pick up on one, Kieran Backus looks as though he's about to keel over every time he's off the ball and then all of a sudden, when it's within range, he springs into life. Yeah, he's picking his moments, isn't he? He really struggled at the back end of the 90 minutes, but he's got that quality in him. You don't want to take him from the field. Danny Choi will give chase, but uh, Sparakis always had the jump on him. Saweda beaten in the air by Miyazawa. And again, Sydney Olympic has stretched. The offside flag is up and they've wasted another golden opportunity, Blacktown. Yeah, they had a big chance, Blacktown as well. Araujo just on the back post if they could find him, but fortunately for Olympic, the flag went up. Travis Major is back with us with some uh, rather fancy headgear. Bandage wrapped across the bonds to uh, stem the flow of blood. Olympic launch it long. Guy Tatsis and Soweda left it for each other. Now it's with Soweda. Lovely deft control. Can he find the delivery towards the back post? And Vekic watches it go over the top. More valuable seconds wasted in Blacktown's quest to win what would be a record third championship. And yeah, they're inviting them in, really. Olympic. Frago Giannis in uh, no hurry either. Why would he be? We are into the 12th minute of the second period of extra time. Blacktown City so close to the title that they can taste it. And then Advekic has delayed the restart from the goal kick so long. He's been issued with a yellow card as well by Stephen Lucas. Yeah, I don't think he'll mind that. Those Not if he gets a grand final yeah. winner's, winner's medal. Precious seconds. Sometimes in this competition, anyway. Very important. Three minutes to go. There's Bacchus again. Looks as though he needs hospital treatment half the time and then Olympic sprinter the next moment. And he's had a terrific game. Yeah, probably should have gone to the corner flag there. Try to just link with a teammate. Little nudge on Poscalero there. Spotted by the eagle eyed Stephen Lucas. A little bit of afters as well with uh, Brendan Hooper. It's been a game that's been played mainly in good spirit. Four yellow cards issued, equally split. In fact, I beg your pardon, six yellow cards, four for Blacktown, two for Olympic, who are still in the game here. Hatsimaratis wanted to take control of that situation, but couldn't do so. And instead, this is uh, 
Amazing dribble from Daniel Araujo. One of the substitutes, of course, still full of energy. Now Travis Major, chance to clinch it. Good save by Henderson. Keeps Olympic alive in the grand final with less than two minutes to go. Yeah, huge save from Henderson. Major, a big chance to seal off what's been a terrific season for Blacktown. But now Hatsumaratis at the other end to loft the cross in. One in the air by Poscolero. Two teams almost out on their feet. Danascos prods it forwards. That's a late challenge. But advantage played, even though there was a foul on Harris Guy Tats. It's the cross in by Sueda. Oh, glance off the crossbar from Brendan Hooper, who's had several opportunities in the air. And Sydney Olympic were that close to taking this grand final into penalties. Yeah, you watch this competition enough. You know, there's always late drama. You never say never. And, well, very nearly then, off the crossbar, Hooper... He's playing in a more advanced role as they search an equaliser. Well, Vekic was beaten. No question. We're into the final minute. Blacktown have been pinged. Stephen Lucas, man on the spot. It's probably all on this for Sydney Olympic, unless there's stoppage time to be added. 45 seconds by my watch to go. Bascour hits it forward, hopefully. Bacchus is there again, though, for Blacktown. Anywhere will do. Top tier of the stand, if you don't mind. The Bocca stand here at the Sydney United Sports Centre. Olympic quickly back on with it, but Suede has been robbed by Bacchus. And Blacktown come forward once again through Miyazawa. Now major. Crossfield ball for Danny Choi. Inside of him is Araujo. Can they put the icing on the top, Blacktown? Danny Choi, Sydney Olympic, very stretched. It's Danny Choi, and he can't get around the last defender. He might still do so. Gets the cross in. Nobody's there for Blacktown on the far post. And there is one minute of added time at the end of extra time, Adam. Yeah, and Danny Choi, big chance. Should have just got a shot on goal there, but tried to almost pass it in the net. And Olympic, while there's time, there's life. Great drama we've had here. Now Danny Choi. There's no defenders back for Sydney Olympic. Choi could seal it here. He has Major Square. Travis Major is delayed too long. And still it goes on. Yeah, brilliant challenge. Sawida, I think it was. He's full of run. Epitomises Olympic season, really. They never give up. Well, they're desperate now, though. This has got to be the last chance. 15 seconds to go. You may as well throw Paul Henderson up. It's all on this. Forward goes the ball towards Brennan Hooper, who wins it in the air. Vekic claims it, and that should just about be that. Blacktown City should be home and hosed for the championship. They are record breakers. Blacktown City win the title. A fitting reward over the course of the season for the attacking style of Mark Crittenden's team. And we should mention as well, the departing club administrator, Ken Shembury, and their late team manager, Tony Hardy, who passed away at the end of August. Celebrations for Blacktown. Disappointment, though, for Sydney Olympic, who fall at the final hurdle for the second time in three years. But boy, Adam Santarossa, they gave it their all today. Yeah, what a game. You, you, you know, it's so often grand finals, they fail to live up to the hype. And this one, we thought it'd be a goal fest, but, you know, it became a bit of a chess game. And well, I don't think any fan walking out of the Sydney United Sports Centre today will have any concerns about the quality of football they're seeing. And really, it epitomises this competition. There's always late drama. There's real quality. It's end-to-end -end and just a great promotion for this game and this league. It was a terrific effort by Olympic, who had, of course, the extra game to play. And we wish Grant Lee and his team the very best of luck as they go forward to play Bentley Greens on Tuesday night in the FFA Cup round of 16. That's at uh, up here Leichhardt's ground of Lambert Park. If you're in the vicinity, try and get down and uh, see that game. But all the congratulations should go to Blacktown City because they were rocked back on their heels by a resurgent Sydney Olympic in the second half of regulation time. But somehow and from somewhere, they found a second win. And crucially, Adam, they found a second goal through Travis Major. Yeah, it's the man. There's no, no question why he's player of the year this year. He just adds that something extra, play a number of roles, and more importantly, finds the back of the net at crucial times. And that certainly was that. Just used his smarts and a great finish. And Henderson beaten again, but 
you can't fault him today. I thought he was quite good. Not at fault for the first goal, but couldn't do much there. Well, Mark Crittenden got in the back slaps from uh, his players, and why not? They've had an excellent campaign. Finished third on the ladder. Sydney Olympic, of course, finished fourth. But crucially, throughout the course of the season, they've been able to find goals at the vital time. Yeah, and it's a credit to their versatility. They've got so many options going forward. It's why they've scored so many goals this year. You know, I think it's now 13 in their last four. It's because they've got the talent of Malia. They've got the talent of, of Major. Bodies in midfield that can score as well. And it's a credit to Mark Critton and the way he's gone about it. And it's a youthful side. He's backed them. He's given them their support. And, well, haven't they paid him back in spades? It's been a great season for them. Well, there's the trophy that uh, Blacktown City are about to lift in a few moments' time. The dignitaries just uh, making their way forward towards the presentation board. Let's uh, just remind you of the goals that we saw here this afternoon in an excellent 2014 Grand Final. Started when the sun was still shining. Ryuji Miyazawa playing his last game in Australia, getting a final touch on the effort from Kieran Backer to put Blacktown a goal to the good, Adam. Yeah, didn't know too much about it, but what about this from Tamaris? Brought them back in the game. Credit Grant Lee with the change. And Vekic had a good afternoon, but there's no stopping that. That came in the 79th minute, and that took us into extra time, of course, when Travis Major got what proved to be the winner and fitting reward, really, for a player who's just been voted the player of the year. His uh, 16th of the campaign... And that gives us a final scoreline of Blacktown City 2, Sydney Olympic 1. And Blacktown now take the lead in the overall honours board, Adam. They've won three championships. Bankstown City Lions with two. Bonnie Rigg White Eagles with two. Sydney Olympic remain on one for the moment. And they were a club on the ropes a few years ago. Uh, went into administration a number of years ago. But credit to everyone involved. They've turned this club around and, and doing it on the back of youth, which is always great to see. And, yeah, what a day. What a day indeed. We will leave you with that scoreline and the news that Blacktown City are the NPL New South Wales Men's One Champions for 2014. Hope you enjoyed our coverage here from Sydney United Sports Centre this afternoon. From myself, Simon Hill, Adam Santarossa and all the team, a very good night.